Welcome to MD Global Muscle Radio, brought to you by High Tech Pharmaceuticals. And now, please welcome your hosts, Giles Thomas and AJ. And welcome to MD Global Muscle Radio, with me, your host, Giles Thomas, here at the Pump Media Studios, joined by my co-host, all the way from Norway, AJ, episode six. I'm ready. I'm pumped. I'm with Pump Media. Everything is good. Episodes going quick. Episode mm-hmm. six already. Yep. Felt like it was just yesterday we had episode one. Yeah. Do you remember that? Oof. It was, only, it was only a few weeks ago, wasn't it? <laughs> Do you remember how excited we were? Oh, we, but, but we got the <laughs> same type of excitement because we got the best guests. Yeah. So it's like every every episode is exciting, but that was something special, of course. But I'm happy that we're episode six, that we're moving along and that we're mm-hmm. hopefully people see we're getting better also. I- I'll be honest. I was a little bit nervous the first couple because we did kind of set the bar so high with yeah. such good guests. Um, and I think... The main thing is we've maintained that. I mean, we're getting fantastic guests. They're 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 happy to come on, and uh, and every single one seems to be so different. And we also that we started this show during off bodybuilding. It's not bodybuilding season yet either. Yeah, it's kind of a bad time to start something like this in yeah. December, January. You know, there's not well, a lot going on. So can you imagine when the show when the show starts? It's going to be a yeah, lot more. Yeah. In, well, it's interesting already, but it's going to be a lot more current news then. Yeah, I mean, it's like I have my other show, Muscle News Weekly, and I've moved that to every second or third week because at the moment there's not a lot of news. But um, thing well, is. With at, we're having good guests on, you can they'll always have something to say regardless of what time yeah. of the year it is. So, and we're creating the news now because we're asking very different questions than other channels are doing. Yeah. So we're getting different answers. So hopefully everybody can learn something when yeah. they come on with, with the interview objects and our opinions, of course. Yeah. And the things I like about having obviously different guests is that they bring something so different. Like the Tony, you say the Tony Freeman, you've got one there that's an athlete who's been retired like two years, mm. and. Um, you know, so it's a different perspective. He's post, you know, he's kind of a little bit out of the sport now. And it's nice to hear that perspective looking back. Mm. But um, but today we have something really special. Yes. What do we have, Giles? What do we have? I've forgotten. Oh, come on. <laughs> do you want to talk about the guest now or a little bit later? No, because we're segwaying into the other thing we're going to talk about. Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So we have. Um, actually, can we get Chris to get the picture up on screen? Uh, I think I think it's a nice way to introduce a guest when you've got because if you've got a personal connection to that a personal relationship built with that guest it's nice it's to have be a photo. Bodybuilder off the he's got. We... <laughs> Whoa! So, a, in... a, AJ, AJ, for the sake of the audio listeners, do you want to explain what's going on? That's uh, Brandon Curry doing a like. Oi! Well, oh. that was Brad. So that's Brandon Curry. <laughs> yep. And there's Giles getting in and putting in a headlock. Is that what you call it? A headlock? Yeah. We look, we kind of look like, like um, Ken Shamrock back in the day, making you tap out. We look like like dark chocolate and white chocolate. Yeah, that's true. In in a box of chocolates. Uh, who's that in the background as well? That's Mr. C- oh, that's Greg Valentino. That's Greg Valentino, yeah. That's yeah. Greg Valentino, the man with the biggest arms of all time, and yeah. it's Christian Duque on the left there, isn't I, it? I believe it is. Yeah, that was, and actually that's right, but on on uh, Brandon's right ear, that's Steve Blackman, the boss of MD. Greg Valentino, he used to be with MD for a long time, wasn't he? He was there for many years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Funny guy. Yeah, um, I rem- <laughs> funny story actually, because I used to um, uh, on the MD boards uh, many years ago. This was back here. This was already, this would have been pre two thousand, about two, early two thousand and ten. And I used to argue a lot with Greg because you know me. Oh. I'm not very combative on the forums. I don't really no. like conflict. It's not something I I search for. But I kind of used to clash with Greg. But I, I remember I called him in and, and I called him an effing disgrace. Oh, why? Yeah. <laughs> well, the. The, the whole arm thing, the whole, you know, the, the documentary, it kind of brought a lot of what I felt was negative attention towards bodybuilding. So we went back and forth, back and forth. And then at the end of 2010, Steve Blackman reached out to me and he said, would you like your own MD column? That was the oh, Euro Muscle Scene column. After you started beefing with Greg and then... Yes, listen to this. Listen to this. And um, so, yeah, so... Uh, and then Steve announced it on the website. It's funny because he announced me. He says, this is the man that discovered Zach Khan. Oh, I got a lot of shit for that, you know. Why? Well, I've never claimed that, but that's from Steve's perspective. He, you know, when St- you know Zach was a very hot name at the time, I was kind of that's how I pl- flagged up in Steve. By the brain. way, he's got the best ratings on our show, Sakon. By far. So obviously, he's hot today too. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's a yeah. guy who hasn't, com- and there's a guy who hasn't competed for three years. How can he get the best ratings? I don't understand it though. I know what you mean. I know what you mean, but you know, uh, yeah. it's better than Phil Heath. And I know, yeah, it's weird. Well, I said that to I said that to Zach um, 
the other day. He must and, he, and he said, he said, really, I'm surprised. <laughs> I'm very surprised. It's fantastic. We, it's fantastic for him. Mm. But also, we didn't put Phil Heath's name first in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, we, we're learning as we're going along. It's like we've, we've already reduced the, the length of time for and these Phil episodes. And Phil Heath, while the one clip we made have 60,000 views now. 60,000. Yeah. The Phil Heath, will I come back? 2019, I yeah, think Yeah, obviously, that is pretty much one of the hottest topics. Yeah. Well... Back to Greg Valentino in your story. Greg Valentino. Yes. Yeah, so anyway, Greg comes on and he says, hey, uh, hey, Giles. He says, uh, I know you don't like me very much, <laughs> but um, I just want to say, you know, happy to have you on board. You know, big respect to you for being, you know, for coming on board, being a team member of MD. And you're probably going to tell me to go F myself, but I wanted to reach out and show you respect. Mm. And I thought, ah, oh, I really respect him for saying that. Yeah. No, and, but- and, and you know what? From that point onwards, we've always been absolutely 100% with each other. Because I love him. I loved him for yeah. saying that. Because Greg was like, remember, with the, I was a big, uh, I can say a fan, but I really respected Rich Piano for his work. Okay. Uh, I don't care if he had whatever he put in it, whatever. I, for me, mm. that doesn't matter. It's the way he hustled and grinded and made something out of himself. Because remember, at the time, Rich Piano was the biggest name in bodybuilding, remember? Yeah, he was. I'm funny enough... Um, from nothing. Well, not from nothing, but from from its own hard work. Where where I get my hair cut, I go to a barber's. You, and, you, you, and, get that? you can do that at home. Just zoom, 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 <laughs> that. I actually go to um, a shepherd and he just shears me like a sheep. I use eight hours on this. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's baby hair. Look, it's baby it's, hair. Yeah, it's baby hair, and it's the, each one takes so there's twenty minutes, and I've got twenty minutes for each, each one. one. So That's you can only one. imagine. Just and and so when you said radio, I was like, what? I'm not. Yeah. Spend all. No. Anyway, yeah. yeah. Back to Rich Piano, was, Greg was, Valentino. Uh, yeah, Rich. Um, Rich I've Piano. Got, I've completely forgot what I was going to say. So he created. Uh, he was the big. Like, oh, when, sorry. So at the, sorry. Before I forget, at the barbers, and when they talk, you, you start having a conversation. Oh, what are you up to, Giles? And how's this? You know, how's the different things you're doing? And of course, you get on the subject of bodybuilding, and it's the one thing they always used to bring up. Oh, what's that guy, Rich Piano? He's huge. Yeah, He's yeah, amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love because they a lot of the um the guys at this this bar. As I go to, they're all very into their tattoos, mm. and they loved, you know, the ink on Rich and all that. Yeah, because uh, well, I think the tattoos and all the things Rich did was probably just to, because he wasn't a young man. Mm. It, it was just to get the younger people drawn into him. Yeah. But he represent. He was Mr. California. He was always in the sport. He's a personal trainer at Gold's Gym. He's not. He's not someone I personally followed. No. But I do respect him. I, I respect anyone who achieves and is, is a success i yeah. mean that's and obviously i mean the, the guy was uh, a huge global name I met, I met him a couple of times greg valentino was probably the first rich piano mm. yes because he was on tyra bank show he yeah. was on the different uh, jerry spring i thought mm. i think it was and a lot of people know him <clears throat> and he used to be a natural for a long time remember he was and he, he trained yeah he, he looked Decent, and he was with training with Arnold Schwarzenegger. Mm. Well, he says we don't know, but <laughs> he likes <laughs> yeah. to say those things. Yeah, no, yeah. but and he's been around in the sport for thirty years, so yeah. good for him. We need more people like him. Yeah, I interviewed Greg at the Arnold Classic last year, and I literally we went to the expo and we just we were literally just there to get as many interviews as we could, and I got an interview with Lee Priest, my old friend Lee Priest. And um, he lived at your home for a week, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. And he ca- came back one day, and I just moved to this. I mean, I, it's a ridiculously expensive penthouse apartment on the quayside, overlooking the the Millennium Bridge. I mean, <clears throat> it was like a real kind of bachelor pad. I was single at the time, oh. so I had this real kind of pimp palace. Oh, pimp palace. It was what, good, was it? what was in it? I had some. I had some good parties there. Oh. So anyway, so um, <clears throat> I did only a, I, protein drinks, or did you have some? <clears throat> Well, wow. so I had a U- I did a UK tour with Lee Priest, and oh. um, we drove around the country. And, and um, I had a Jaguar XK8 at the time, Ooh. and it's funny because uh, Lee, Lee just spent the whole week just taking the piss out of me because he I was pissing on you, taking the piss. Oh. It's a British phrase. It's not like <laughs> I know, but you know the other side with Lee Priest. You know that that story. No, I don't know. So we don't want to talk about that. But for people who know, they will know. <laughs> okay, and uh, you keep throwing me off my trail of thought here, mm. and. Um, what was it for, for? Yes. So anyway, yes, we did a UK tour and it was uh, it was a really good fun week, actually. And I really he's, he's someone that um, maybe like the Greg Valentinos and some of these people who have a, have an online persona mm-hmm. um, are completely different when you meet them. Mm. You know, it is a persona. It's like I, I like I, I'm pretty much myself. I try to be myself. I use my own name and 
when I'm on social media, on forums. I don't try to, I, I always treat it like if that person was in front of you, because thing is, when you're at the shows, you, if you say stuff about people and you're going to be brave about it, you're going to have to, you're going to maybe bump. That's weird in modern day bodybuilding. You're going to bump into people. People talk shit online and, like they, and they don't no. see, and they see them and they don't do shit. Oh, no, Why no, would no. you say, ah, yeah. come on, but let's get off the beef thing and let's get into Brandon Curry. So yes, Brandon Curry. We can talk about more of him later, but the okay, let's talk about the oxygen thing. Oxygen, oxygen, Jim and Kuwait. So, what's this all about? What's the whole thing about? Well, I've um, four years ago they started busting. Five years ago they really started taking over the bodybuilding scene. Well, I would say the first time I heard of a Beta Budai. Beta Budai yeah. was I think it was in it was about seven eight years ago. He started off uh, with uh, I believe coffee shops. Oh. And he, he, he kind of grew them quite quickly and he had quite a few coffee shops. So he's not like some people think like an oil millionaire who just inherits a Saudi Arabian guy who just inherit everything himself. I would imagine, he made him himself. I would imagine he's, he's an entrepreneur. Yeah. He's a very, very smart man. Yes. Now, the first time I heard about him was when um, uh, my friend Kevin Horton, the amazing pho body the photog pho yeah. photographer, photographer, and he was... Um, and when Beto was starting to make moves into the bodybuilding industry, he had this vision yeah. of creating what he has now created in the arab world he has a huge following yeah he's very well respected but mm. um and he decided to um he, he, people laughed at him because he said he was going to be the the first to bring ronnie coleman over and they were like you're not going to bring ronnie coleman they all laughed at him he brought ronnie coleman over people sat up and take no took notice i was like okay so maybe this guy he opened up a gym opened up another one have you seen that gym whoa Huh? Amazing gym. Yeah. I've, I've spoke to Kevin Horton and he said, Giles, he said, I've photographed uh, at gyms all over the world. He says, but I'm telling you, mm. that is the best bodybuilding gym. The mo he says, he said, if you want to, if you want to, um, Hamstring machines, you're like 25 I know, hamstring it's machines. It's a whole floor, but just one. It's just amazing. He, he's uh, Bader apparently is like obsessed about having the best equipment. So his athletes have the best. Like you might like like you're you're a little bit taller than me. You might want a, a slightly different chest machine to me, or but he wants it, it, everyone has the choice of whatever they want, and um, yes, and I remember a story actually when uh, Kevin said he went over and um, they went into because uh, Beta has a t it, this well this was at the time um, he has a very small office. Mm. It's Bader, not bother. It, no, it's like a, it's like a like a broom cupboard. Oh. It's like you'd expect him because he said he wants to stay grounded he wants to, so he has the same sort of office he had when he started he said it keeps his like if he has a big grand office and a big table he doesn't want to lose sight of his roots and his work ethic and he doesn't want to lose his vision so <clears throat> it seems like uh so he's helped the most the, the biggest success he's had is with mm. armin ashkanani mm -hmm. big rami yep roly winkler yep now Brandon Curry. I would say those four are the, the biggest successes. Yeah, but do you remember when he first started, he was... He, Nathan uh, Diaz, of course. Yes, but I'm talking years before that. Mm. He, ha he brought over Dennis Wolf, Dennis James. Yeah, but I mean, as to build him up as on oh, stage. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm talking about these guys. Because mm. he had all the... Uh, Dennis James was in the beginning, but I'm talking mm. about guys he helped build from something to epic. Uh, yeah, and I heard a story... I could tell you a little story about... What he offered them he, when he brought over the um, Dennis Wolf and Dennis Jim. This is what I heard. It's what I heard from a good source. And he said when they arrived, they were given a sheet of paper, and it said and it had a list of Ferrari, Lamborghini, oh. uh, Aston Martin, for sake of argument, McLaren, you know. And it was a list, and he says, "Okay, guys, pick which one you which which car you want for what day." So oh. like so, so Dennis Wolf, we go. Oh, I fancy a, a Ferrari Modena 360. Shit. The next day, the dealership or whatever, whoever would pull up and he'd say, "Okay, I'll, there's the keys. We'll come back if you want a different car." I wonder car. what the prices are in Kuwait though for this, because in Oslo you got to get broke doing this mm. the first day. How much is to rent a car like that in here in England? I don't know, Chris. Oh, rent a car. No, oh, because um, he's rent them. He did only rent them for days. It's not his personal cars. Maybe f what do you think? Five hundred pounds a day, Chris. Yeah, <laughs> uh, this is our guy. It's our producer Chris Clark on the on the. He needs laptop. a pillow so he can get out to what you know when he drives. He puts the pillow. So he can get... <laughs> <laughs> no, no, Poor Chris. yeah, Poor Chris. no. So, so Kuwait, 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 Kuwait. You said Kuwait. Mm -hmm. Kuwait. No, and also in uh, as you see, also in uh, Saudi Arabia, Saudi, no, in Dubai. Mm -hmm. 
that's not the same as Kuwait, of course, but it's like Arab countries. Uh, they're really building. Mm -hmm. Like th this fitness yeah, expo yeah, they yeah, have. Yes. The Dubai fitness expo. You wanted us to go, didn't you? I wanted you to go, but you said you couldn't go. I know. Why not? All uh, the stars were there. And you know what? I didn't realize how many people were there until afterwards. I was mm. like, shit, I should have gone. Why do you think the Arab world is booming so much when it comes to the fitness industry? Um, well, a few years ago, it was kind of the, the boom was in India. Yeah. And now, yeah, sure. And then you've got areas. Um, it's like when I was working for RCSS, yeah. um, they said that some of the booming areas for them in terms of supplement sales were places like China, mm. uh, Dubai, uh, uh, um, Australia, and like kind of not like America, the, the, the typical countries that were generating the biggest kind of supplement sales. And they said there's like there's certain countries absolutely like they'll do like a for sake of argument, a, a figure. Oh, we're doing a million dollar sales. A month or whatever, just from that one small country. Wow! You know? In fact, Kamal Kamal Al Ghagni, uh, eighteen years ago, I was working for a British supplement company, working for a guy called John Citrone, uh, who used to compete against Arnold. He was we trained together for a couple of years, still competing well into his sixties. Um, he used to buy off quite. Uh, he used to be exporting quite large amounts of supplements out to like the Middle East. I mean, we're talking like forty foot containers, and uh, yeah. So. I think also because since I'm also from a different like. When you go to Europe and you go to like, I wouldn't say third world countries because like Dubai is like epic, mm -hmm. but like uh, other <clears throat> developing countries. Yeah, but like people, yeah, but non Western country, you can say. Having size and how you look, mm. uh, much, like much, you know what I mean? Like um, the, the males from the 80s in America, you know, the, yeah. the, it has a lot of value. And in Western countries, they don't. When, yeah. when you go to, I, you when, know, I, uh, if you go to, let's say, if you go to Jamaica mm -hmm. and you're big guy in shape, yeah, everybody stops you and say, "What's up, okay. bro?" And you get first into the clubs, and you, that doesn't happen in Norway. That's for sure. They start asking, oh, really? Ugh, "Why you want to do that?" <laughs> Here we go. There so, you go. Ferrari five five nine five nine nine, one to three days, seven hundred and fifty pounds. Ferrari California one to three days, six hundred and fifty. Ferrari four eight eight. 850 Ferrari 458 Spider 1090 and then you go to Kuwait prices Kuwait prices when you can no but in also in America now if you're big some places you, you can't even train at the gyms they say excuse me you're too big to train here what? they have this bodybuilding rule in yes Norway. no in America oh, in America, also. oh the lung alarm isn't it no, but I'm just saying in all these countries they, mm. they it's not like saluted to be like huge muscular but if you go to those countries, you can take... If you, yeah. Have you been to Thailand and, and when you're in shape? I've never been to Thailand. You sign autographs to people. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah but they probably think you're like a WWE wrestler mm, or... I don't know. I've seen rapper or... smaller, muscular guys sign autographs too. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. So like shorter, yeah, I mean. Do you know what? Like say the Middle East and like uh, countries like uh, Iran, Iran, Iraq, the genetics on these guys. And they're, and they're um, what can I say? It's also legal to do things there. You don't have to hide it. You yeah. can go into the store and you buy can, your you, you can go whatever. to Iran and you can buy olive oil, can't you? There you can. <laughs> no, but also, and they're tough. They used to do a lot of uh, wrestling in Iran and Iraq. You know, rest like the rich, mm. not the WWE wrestling, but the, mm. so there's a lot of strong men mm -hmm. and like oil wrestling. And so they're, they're into the macho mm. building hard. And you see how they train over there. Yes. You, you've seen how they train. Yeah, yeah. Oof, yeah. He can yeah. train. So, uh, no, yeah. Kuwait. So it's going to bother. Back to bother. Back to bother. Yes. Yeah, so obviously he was, um, he had a vision seven, eight, about seven, eight years ago. Uh, and like I said, he started by bringing over guys like Dennis James, uh, Dennis Wolf. Uh, I believe he took Dexter over once. Um, I'm trying to think of anything. Chris Cormier is there now teaching, posing. Later on, he, yeah, he did, yeah. Um, in fact, the last time I saw Chris, I was training right next to him and Victor Martinez at the City Atlantic gym in Las Vegas because mm. uh, Chris Cormier was um, training Victor. But what happened with this situation when he walked out when he saw Rod Rami didn't place well? He left the arena, didn't he? Bother. Oh, really? I heard he just left the arena. Oh, yeah. Well, the thing is, if you And now Rami is not a part of the Oxygen Crew at all? I know, AJ, but think about your guy. He's second place at the Olympia. He's won the Arnold Europe in 2017. And then all of a sudden, he's not in the first... Well, it was, I th was he in the first call-out? But I mean, he's th I think... No, he was not in the first call-out. But certainly within... 10, 15 minutes of that prejudging, I think maybe, I, th I think we all knew that he wasn't going to play second. Remember on the boards, Alito, and, uh, you weren't on the board, you were at the stage. I was at you the were, show, yeah. I was at the show. As soon as Rami came out, people were like, no. Yeah. 
But on Saturday was a different story. Oh, ho, ho. AJ, I've said it in previous. Oh, he could have. Uh, if he looked the way he did on Saturday, could he have won? As I said in the previous episode, no, he couldn't have won. I think he'd have been, we've spoke about this before. I think he'd have been battling out with Bonak for fourth. He wouldn't have cracked top three because that top three was tight. That was pretty much, it was top three than it was everybody else. So where is he going to train now? Well, I've uh, mentioned this in my new MD column oh. because I got an exclusive from Neil oh, Where Hill. can you read this new MD? In the that, where? It's in the February edition. Oh, MD uh, Global Muscle Buzz. That's not out yet, so it's we not can't... out yet. It's out in the. Uh, well, it should be by the time this podcast goes out, it'll be out uh, maybe a week afterwards. So we're going to ask all the tough questions to Brandon. Not mm. tough, but all the questions um, the fans at home, the viewers haven't asked before. Before, uh, yeah, yeah. so it's going to be interesting when Brandon comes on. I got to say, I'm extra excited about having Brandon on because I mm. I really really like Brandon. I interviewed him at the Olympia in 2017. And uh, this is a bit of a self-indulgent, one, but he, ma- he made a really nice comment about, you know, it was, it, normally the interview, you're just talking about them. And it was just, it was nice. It was unusual. It took me by surprise. He made a comment about me, oh. which, which I was like really touched by because I was thinking, this is the Olympia. This is your time, you know? And he was like, and he made it like a nice, it was just, it was just nice. I, I just, it, so for me, it's like an extra personal one. You know, it's like yeah. having like, like Zach Khan, I've been friends with him 20 years. And, you know, I mean, pretty much most of the guests I have, that sort of personal connection with anyway you've got some sort of personal story to re- to because re- i'm excited because since i was a kid i've been a kid well i always keep saying kid well i wasn't a kid then but since a couple of years ago when he first bought like 10 years ago he's been into the scene now remember because yeah, yeah, yeah. when he was an amateur also he was hyped mm-hmm. it was like he grabbed my attention when i saw him you remember he was always in the magazine remember he was coming up when he was yep. he wasn't big but he had a nice shape he kind of did this and then he kind of did that. i was so excited and it just nothing happened and then he just stood still and he didn't put on the size and i was a little bit depressed and then he <laughs> and, and then he came back now like whoa H- hang on a minute and what, i'm hyped again remember when he got eighth place at the olympia what, was that 2008 I want to say 2008. Look how long that's been. But it was like, I, I, I believe Neil Hill was prepping him then. Oh. And he brought him in. He looked, and he looked absolutely fantastic. And then it was like, oh, he's eighth place. He's top 10 Olympia. He's moving up. And then it just went. It's such a good story that's going on with him right now. Yeah. And it's so good to be a part of no, it. Well, not part of the story, but yeah, yeah. promoting it now. Because everybody with any bodybuilding knowledge or what you can, like skills would mm-hmm. understand that this something special is going on last year with him who would you say what well obviously sean roden was probably the shock i'd say maybe kamal and say sean roden were the shock athletes of last year the ones that we didn't really see coming ah, for well, different with, reasons with roden it, it wasn't a sh- it was was it for you it was it was mate nobody had roden top five no but i'm just previous. saying like i had roden always as the best shape currently of Right. I, I, after 2017, I had completely written Sean Roden off. Yeah, but it's a little bit, it depends. But people like with me, or I like like who my Tony Freeman type of physiques, mm. taller, wider, yeah, you know. Yeah. Oh, big... no, no, no. I'm, I'm a huge Sean Roden fan. Yeah. I mean, I'd, I had. Are I... you a huge Sean Roden fan? I am. When did I... that happen? <laughs> just now. <laughs> just, <laughs> just now. Just text me. Just happened. No. So with Roden, I always like. It's just a little bit fine too, because he has the. I like the taller, wider shapes, yeah. and I, he has yeah. that. I, I, I honestly, for a few years, I, I've said this many times. I thought uh, it was him or Cedric McMillan that had the potential to win the Olympia. But I honestly, after 2017, I thought those two are never going to win the Olympia. It's never. No, gonna it was a big surprise that he won. But I'm, yeah. I just I th- fantastic. When, when Rolly Winkler came out, I was like, whoa! <laughs> when he like, whoa! You like. It's- you know when someone does like a front relax and, like, and they open yeah. up, AJ, and then all of a sudden they open up a bit more, and oh. it's like, when is it gonna stop? And his waist was vroom, yeah, like. Yeah. Uh, well, on the Saturday, on the Saturday, he looked. I think if he'd have looked like Roly looked like that on the Friday, I mean, he would have been maybe a contender for second. But thing is, by then, you know, it was it was one and two with uh, Sean and Phil. When was that? They used to have a one day. Uh, vote. When was that in Olympia? Where you when it was judged on one day? Nineteen ninety six. They changed it in nineteen ninety seven. They, they they split the Olympia up over two days. Yeah. Because in nineteen ninety seven, that was the year that Kevin Arone came fourth. But on the second day, sh- uh, Kevin really pulled ahead. It was like what Rami did. Mm. He pulled ahead, but it was kind of too late. Mm. So I think sometimes the only time you can really pull yourself ahead is if it's really close. So ninety seven, they had a one day, two day. 
Okay, okay. Yeah, they split it up over two days. And that was when Dorian had his tricep. His tricep was hanging by a tendon. <laughs> and he said, it, Dorian said, he said, if someone had actually banged my shoulder, uh, my sh- he would have snapped completely. Mm, mm. So... So, uh, what were we talking about we've again? We've covered a lot of subjects we covered here. A lot we've, of... Got, we've firing off in How all How long directions. have we been gone now, Chris? 25. Oh, yeah, yeah, finally yeah, yeah, yeah. we can... We've scratched uh, the surface. What, what have we gone... Oh, men's physique. Oh, okay. I'm going to... Hey, gonna... hey, why do you start I'm, it I'm off? Gonna, you just wake me up in 20 minutes. No, oh, sh- Guys, at home. Hello. No, but seriously, men's uh, physique. Full respect. Let's get on to... In the future, we're planning a men's physique episode. Yes. To see how that goes. Mm -hmm. Uh, There's a difference in men's physique over the years. We were both six years ago. We wouldn't say we were haters, but we didn't give you the... We didn't... uh, Men's physique was not something we would... As a bodybuilding fan. Yeah. It was a shock to see what's going on now. Guys in shorts. And small, and it wasn't... Mm. But I saw Mark Anthony, of course, you know, the... (laughs) So I started watching only him. Really? You've never mentioned Mark Anthony before? (laughs) (laughs) No. So I watched... I started watching it because of him. Okay. So it was... uh, I liked him, but the rest I wouldn't care so much about. But over... He's a nice guy, too. I really like him. He was good friends with Jay Cutler, wasn't he? Still is. Over the years, uh, we sat... I don't want to say sat, but... They have the biggest followings on Instagram. Huge. Is Buendia 4 million? It's something... But Jeremy no, Buendia... No, he's not 4 million. He's 3. Oh, Same mm. as Phil Heath. Oh, wow. And I'm just saying, like, when you go to the gym in parts of Europe, at least, yeah. they're the biggest uh, crowd. They're, mm. they're, they're, like, I don't know. I, I'm just saying... I'm, we're never going to change. For us, it's bodybuilding. Do you know what it is, though? But we got to give him some props. But when you're at a bodybuilding show and, say, Men's Physique, or like some of the Two Bros shows, I've been sat there and I'm thinking, oh, Men's Physique. Oh, maybe now I'll go and get some lunch. <laughs> but thing is... <laughs> maybe now you do what? No, 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 no. Listen, I'll go get some lunch. Oh, and then no. sometimes I think, and in 30 seconds in, you're hooked. You're watching it. And you're like, actually, this is... And you see some fantastic physiques. So that's the point. Like a lot of bodybuilding fans, I know they're men's physique haters. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm talking about bodybuilding fans, not yeah. fitness fans. Mm-hmm. But I think we should give these guys a little bit more because mm-hmm. they're a lot bigger now. Yes. Physically. Remember back yeah. in the, 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 they're gaining size every year. Yeah. Do you know the one, the only problem, the only thing I don't like about men's physique that when I'm watching it, that will irritate me is when you've got someone that is clearly a bodybuilder, mm. clearly has a physique that is that should be in trunks, not shorts. Mm. That's when I get annoyed. If you see a guy that you know they've got their look and they've you know they got the, the square jaw and the pretty boy looks like myself, and um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and yeah. uh, you want to do a little yeah, hair, yeah, hair yeah. flick, and um, What's that? And then they've got like, you know, the, the pretty chest out. You know, they've got that midsection, that kind of, you know, then that's real men. That's the people who should be doing men's physique. I just think now let's hope all these men's physique guys, they build their physique, their body. Mm-hmm. And then they jump over to classic in five years. Just going to say that. And then they go three more years. They go to the open. Mm-hmm. And then we have a party, as Juan Morel you'd like to say. <laughs> you know? yeah. so, so I just want more people in the sport, more people, you know, like, come all, come all. Yeah. But please go jump to the classes. We want to see you get. Yeah. But some people also just want to have that size. They don't want to get freaky. Yeah. Well, some yeah. people can't it's, get freaky, of course. Well, like I was, my last contest, uh, I compete. I've done 14 shows. My last show, I chose to do classic. Mm. I did classic. And it's funny because I, um, I had a few sort of close friends what, um, that I was sending my progress pictures to. That I was, you know, because I, I'm, I'm, I always get very pretty good condition. And I was sending pictures, and I and, um, and I'll, I probably can't say what I said to Zach Carl. Oh. I sent him a picture. It was a chest, abs, shoulders, and he says, "Bro, you should do men's physique." Hey, yeah. And I'll well, I won't say what it I said like- to reply, but mm. I don't think he spoke to me for a month. No, but there are some good. Uh... <laughs> ah, that's me. Oh. That's very pixelated. That was that was my yeah. That was outside after my last contest. That's with my uh, my fiance. So men's Rosie. physique is not, and also, and by the way, <laughs> that's a nice, good find in Norway now. A kid came up to me, and he, <laughs> and he, and he I saw him in the gym. I was like, "Bro, you're looking kind of like Brad Pitt." <laughs> and he told me, "Thanks." And Hang all, on, you said the same to Chris. Well, that's not Brad Pitt. Are you, are you trolling us? No, no, no. But anyway, so now I become his manager. Oh wow! And I'm gonna pick his bo- uh, his board. You call him bo- uh, Trump? <laughs> what do you call him? The short collar? Uh, board shorts. 
So now I have I'm gonna put <laughs> I'm gonna put the same contact lenses yeah. as the same color on the trunks. Okay, yeah. And then we're gonna have the I saw a hair piece from Brad not a hair piece, a a, a <laughs> hairstyle Brad Pitt had yeah, in nineteen yeah. nineties. Because he looks facially like him. Okay. So I'm gonna give him the same hair. Ooh. Yeah. And not only that, you know who he's who he's friends with. He's friends with Jay Cutler. Oh really? So now we're gonna do the American. So he's going to Jay Cutler oh, in the summer. So we're gonna. Yeah, my mind is. Are you are working. you allowed to mention his name? Herman Lear. Herman Lear. Le Leia. Leia. How do, you, how do you spell that last name? Let me get the correct one up. <laughs> what? Who's your? Oh, wait. Who's your favorite <laughs> in men's physique guy at the moment? Oh, I don't want to be UK biased. I really like Ryan. Get Terry. somebody else other than the British guy. Uh, So I think Wendier, when he was at his best, when he was winning, I, I could see why he, that guy won four Olympia titles uh, in the men's physique. I mean, he was off last Ooh. year, uh, Wendier. He's not competing anymore, so I forget know. about that. Oh, sorry, you're about current. Correct. I don't... I don't now, come on now. You said you like men's physique. There's so many and, of them. Please, Chris, put in the name so people can see at home. I like Ryan Terry. I think Ryan Terry's fantastic. I think I like his, I okay. like his chest and his but ab I'm formation. Come on, British guy then. Let's give me one more. You see, he doesn't know anybody. <laughs> no, <what> I don't <laughs> know. <laughs> he doesn't know anybody. They, honestly, they, I mean, like I said, it's, it's kind of like a guilty pleasure watching men's physique because you don't want to like it. Why? But, you know, it, it, <laughs> it's, it's like... Um, I don't know. It's like dressing up in women's clothing. You don't want to like it, but you end up enjoying it. Okay. First, Herman, <laughs> L-E-I-R. Herman Lair for people in Norway. Okay. Uh, men's physique, uh, currently, I like the guy who, um, the one who argue, brought, he has got aggression. Not Brandrick Hent. Not the guy who won not, the Olympia. Not now. the guy who won. He's great, of course. Like Jerome. I don't want to say, we said last Jerome Ferguson. That's, that's a completely different athlete. Is it Hickson? Jeremy. We have to get it correct because we got tr somebody. Andre, Jeremy. Andre Fer. Andre Ferguson. Is it Andre oh, Ferguson? No, we no, but is yeah, it? I don't Let's know. get the Please, Chris, can you put in Andre Ferguson? <laughs> no, forget about him now. He's Yeah, there you go. Oh, right. oh, yeah, look, look at the left. Doesn't he look like Brad Pitt if he fixes his hair and shit? Uh, I'm not sure. There, there's I the left. I need to see more pictures. There, put that one. Uh. He's 19. No, oh, he's 19. He's 19. Oh, fantastic. Look, he's 19, drug free. Oh, that's good. Blonde, cute boy. We're going to promote him to the people. Forget about him. He's not a pro. This oh, look at that hat. <laughs> <laughs> he looks cool. Yeah, so that's a cowboy. But you know what, though? But I mean, I was 19. I don't know. I was, I was quite bulking. I was bulking at yeah, 19. Yeah, but man's physique is a new style. I know, but I'm saying have a physique like that at 19. Okay, let's get them. Jerome. Let's get him correct, please. Jerome. I want to. Uh, what's John Ferguson That's a Hollywood guy I yeah, like uh, is it Andre, Andre Andre Ferguson Andre I would think Giants. Is. No stop no, We gotta give him respect now Yeah, yeah I just yeah. said he's my favourite guy And I don't even know his name Andre <laughs> Ferguson Jerome. No but I saw him He caught my eye He's He's got that ag aggression That's him Andre that's Ferguson him. Yeah 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 We got him yeah, Go that's... to the picture on the Down to the right and down No not that one he, he, I've seen him. He is fantastic. Come on, press yeah, on he's fantastic. Uh, come on, man. He looks fantastic, huh? He could do classic. Look at that picture. Look, Look at his shape. He's wide. He's wide. And he's also got that, uh, I'm going to F you up personality. <laughs> gonna, and Sadiq. You know Sadiq? Mm -hmm. Hadzakovic? Hadzeko yes. He used to be, uh, well, he still is, but he used to be like the Von Moger popularity five years ago. Okay, okay. And then he went to the men's, he was battling with Jeremy Bondia. Yes. In the men's physique, yeah. he came second twice, and then he went to the classic. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. And then is that the guy who looks like Frank Zane? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah Show yeah. him the uh, Sadiq with Frank Zane. So he was he had a lot of hype three years ago. Remember, everybody mm. was talking about him. Yeah, and he didn't get the placings he might expected in the classic. Yeah, he got I've, I've seen I've seen him at the Olympia, and he is very got very good physique. Yeah, and he's going back to men's physique now. Okay. So look for him to be in the mix there. Okay. Okay, so what, what else do you want to talk about? Because I'm losing the will yeah, to Yeah, let's go from over to that. What, what, no, what? big respect. <laughs> and then we go to something else. What will we have here? Yeah. Who's moving up? Who's moving up in 2019? 2019. 2019. We're in 2019 now. Who's Three names. We can't mention them all. Three names. Who's moving up? Ian Valier. 
That's I one. He was 14th at Olympia. Absolutely incredible. I think he's going to start getting some because he he did a good show. If you do, it doesn't matter where you place. If you get a good showing at the Olympia, that really gets you noticed from all the other two, second or third tier level pros that are looking to move up. And I think he's really going to move mm. up. I think he's going to. He could win. Oh, look at that. Look at that. I mean, that's his side tricep reminded me of Dorian. Look at that, man. Look, I mean, should we get the side tricep shot, maybe? I mean, look at the graininess. Look at the thickness. And he got better and better as the shows went along in 2018. Yeah, press that one. <laughs> look at that. Yeah. Married to Melissa. No, uh, together with Bombstead's uh, sister. Yes. 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 He's married to Melissa, isn't he? Because they, I mean, it's, it's, imagine that, three pros. Imagine how cool that is with three people competing in the yeah. same, in the highest level. Yeah. She, where does Melissa compete on? What division? Melissa did the uh, figure, and I was I surprised that she didn't place higher, but she was very, um, very dry. Very muscular. In fact, young. I, she's young too. Yeah, I, she had a fantastic. To be honest, she she was one of the ones at the the Olympia from the pro figure that I actually really remembered, and I was quite surprised she didn't make top six. I think she I think she got ten, or didn't make top ten, but it, she she really she's got a killer physique. I think she could maybe move up to women's physique. Mm, mm. But um, so anyway, and another one I think is going to yeah. move up is uh, Alexis Rivera. Oh yes, yeah, yeah. that's something. Did you see the one tamper? Did you see the energy with Sergio and uh, who, um, Alexis when they went mano a mano? The whole well, crowd went crazy. About a week ago, pumped. A week, two weeks ago, you know Hector Mendoza. Yeah, yeah, the Spanish Latin American the MD, muscle development. MD, yeah. MD Latino photographer. He's, he sent me some. Um, he sent me that video, and he went, "Jules, watch it. Watch it." At, 23 minutes something he says watch how the crowd reacts amazing were people crazy. were going crazy yeah. that's probably the best crowd reaction in a small well a lower place show isn't it uh, peter mcgoff said to me he said giles he said that's the the craziest atmosphere i've seen any wow. crowd go he says like from the days since the 80s when there was no internet where you had to go to the show to see your idols i wish i just wish people would go more to watch the IFBB Pro shows. They're fantastic. Make it as a vacation, you know? Yeah. It's not just be online. It's well, not the same. I was at uh, the 2017 Tampa Pro because obviously my partner, Rosie, she was in the women's physique. She took fifth. Um, and we actually said, I said, you know what? I said, I've enjoyed this, the venue, the hotel, mm. the, the place, the people so much. I would actually come back next year just to watch as a spectator from UK to America. And I would like people to make some noise too. Because mm. people are too quiet. Some, they just watch. Yeah. You've got to make chaos. I don't like it when you see guest poses or you, and, and the crowd's quiet. And you think, come no, on, guys. They've got to battle it out. It's like, yeah. you, like you're in a football yeah. game. Or... Yeah. Do you want to know Do you want to know my where I've actually been sat as a, actually as a fan for this one? The biggest ever crowd reaction. Do you know, I actually get a shiver just talking about this. My biggest ever crowd reaction I've ever seen. Was when do you think it was? Is it when the Roden won? No, 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 no. no. no this was, Wasn't it? No, I was 16 years old. Oh. 1992 British Grand Prix. Oh. Now... Who came out then? No internet. Now, now yeah. this was the day before we had the Olympia, Mr. Olympia at Helsinki. Oh. In yeah. Finland. Man, it wouldn't be great if they did it like that, go around the world right. again. So, of course, we arrive... And there's rumors who won because then you had to, it took a few weeks in the magazines before you ever found out. Mm. And anyway, they had this like archway and they had all this smoke coming out. And there was uh, pretty much the full Olympia lineup because it was only one quick so flight Lee over. So Haney came out. No, 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 Lee Haney. Lee Haney retired in 91. Oh, no. When was it? 92. Well, listen, yeah. listen, wait. <laughs> and uh, the last two that came out was Kevin Verona just took second at the Olympia. Yeah. And anyway, then they paused. And all there was like 20, maybe 25 guys. Al Q. Gurley, uh, Henderson Thorne, um, Mohammed Beneziza, yeah. um, uh, loads of them. <laughs> yeah. And then all of a sudden they says, and now, and this was sold out. The show was sold oh, out. Yeah. And new now, Mr. Olympia, and now, said. like you said with Sean Roden yeah. last year, the new Mr. Olympia, oh, crazy. Dorian Yates. It was like the first ah. Brit. I mean, this is the first British Olympi Ever. Olympia. The day after the Olympia. And he's on stage and he just walked out and he did that pose where he puts his hands down, did his front lats, but didn't even smile and then just walks off and then just gets in the lineup. Mm. And I remember the place. We were actually like, like stamping our feet. Every, I mean, people were going crazy. Yeah. It was, I mean, the hot, the how did he look? Fant well, fantastic. Fantastic. This was the Royal Center in uh, Nottingham where they had the British finals for many years. And the place absolutely, I mean, I've never seen anything like that since. That was amazing. The, yeah. I, that thing is that that's kind of hard to top. 
So for all the young people that they started bodybuilding probably because of that, like when you Ooh. see that reaction, I want to do this, you know? Yeah, yeah. So that's important. I was just disappointed Sean Ray wasn't there. He was my favorite. So Ray, Sean Ray favorite? and Kevin of Rome were my two favorites. I mean, Kevin of Rome was there. And I remember because Kevin of Rome posed to Michael Jackson Jam. Oh. Want to get up, Jam. You want to get up. Yeah. And, he, and he actually uh, spoke to the lighting people and they had like different color flashing lights, which the other pros didn't have. And I just remember it's like one of those things. It's like, what, 26, 27 Jaws, years ago. how can we get the people back? Uh, the other day I was watching 98 Olympia. Sometimes uh, I just mm. like to watch old uh, people. Go to YouTube. For the younger people out there, go to YouTube. Watch the old Olympias. Just watch yeah. them and enjoy it. How, what can we do to get the posing back, bro? The posing? Oh, the posing. The routines. I wasn't expecting you to say that. The routines were just amazed. Yeah. Everybody had something. Yeah. I spoke to, oh. I think I've mentioned this before, I spoke to um, a top top 10 Olympia guy uh, a few months ago. And I says, mate, I says, love your physique. You're but, amazing. Yeah. But your transitions <laughs> are pretty good. But you need to put more into your posing. And he just and he why? just wasn't interested. He says, well, why? Why? What's the incentive? I was like, well, well, I don't know. Man. Baffles me. Well, we're going to talk to Brandon. We're yep. going to talk to Brandon. Mm -hmm. we got a, Brandon we, Curry. Yes, Brandon so obviously Curry. we need to wrap up. And also we need to give a shout out to yeah. our sponsors, High Tech Pharmaceuticals. Pump Media. Yes, Pump Media, our fantastic uh, producer, Chris Clark there, who's made all this happen. Muscle uh, development. Muscular development, uh, yeah, fantastic. Who's your shout out to? Who's your shout out to other than them? Oh, you always do this. I, I never prep for this <laughs> one. Do I, I, don't know, I don't know. And what's that five question thing you want to ask? Do you remember that five, five question? Questions? Just, that's for Brandon, maybe. Brandon, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Shout out to one question. To up, now I'm going to upset some people. Is this Manchester? We're not, we're, are we in Manchester now? You're not far from Manchester. So is this Manchester City or Manchester United's home turf? Oh, Chris. Well, Chris will know. We don't know. We're about 40 minutes we're close to Liverpool. Man. So we're Liverpool fans, mostly <laughs> here. Liverpool, guys. <laughs> Chelsea is going for the title this year. That's my shout out to Chelsea Football Club. <sighs> Yeah, who's your shout out to? <laughs> <laughs> Certainly not uh, a football club. No, we got a Norwegian coach in Norway coaching Manchester United now. Mm. Have you heard about this? Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, he doesn't ring no bell. Mm. On, well, let's get back to bodybuilding. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay, well, we will be right back uh, momentarily with our very special guest. Brandon Curry, possibly the prod the prodigy they used to call him. Yes, the prodigy. The prodigy. Possibly the dark horse for 2019 yeah. as he goes into the Arnold Classic and the and the Olympia. Top three picks were Ian Valerie. We forgot we, we cut you off. Valia, Alex Rivera and Nicholas Vuliud. Nicholas Vuliud. Actually, <laughs> now we're going a little bit. Yeah, come on. I would say Sean Clarida is going to be moving right up. So you got pick three: Ian Valerie. Valier. Nick, Valier. Valier. It's French. Canadian, Alexis Rivera is going to make. I love that guy's physique. He's got Va a beautiful shape. And the third one was Volut or was it Kalido? You got to make a decision. Half and half. <laughs> Three and four. No, I, 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 there's two guys I'm definitely going to be moving up. Mm. Because also, I think this is going to be Nicolas Vuliot's last year as a 212 because he is just too big. Patrick's tour is going to make him grow even more. No, I, I, just, I don't know. I still think they should keep him as a 212. But anyway, but Sean Clarida, there's a guy who's like 40 pounds away from the 212 limit and he's like 170 something and he's, he's winning multiple pro shows. I'm sticking to my always my old picks. Lionel B. Yeah, Lionel. <laughs> we're going for Rolly Winkler. Rolly, and we're going yeah, for yeah. the return of Phil Heath. Oh. That's it. I'm still sticking to it. Hang on. I, I want to drop the mic now because that, yeah, I, I would just. Yeah. Number one fanboy. <laughs> and there <laughs> we go. <laughs> okay, right. Well, we, we'll be back momentarily with Brandon Curry. Speak to you soon. MD Global Muscle Radio is brought to you by High Tech Pharmaceuticals. Now, back to the show. And welcome back to MD Global Muscle Radio, episode six here at the Pump Media Studios. Joined by my co host, AJ. We are joined by none other. Go on, round of applause. Yeah, we got to go. <laughs> round of applause for Brandon Curry. Yeah. Brandon, oh, so good God. to see you, mate. How are you? Doing great, guys. Doing great. Good. So, um, yeah, so Christmas. Did you spend Christmas in Kuwait? Because you're in, you're in Kuwait now, aren't you? Yeah, I, I spent Christmas in Kuwait. I left uh, a few days after Thanksgiving. I think, well, we left. I left from actually, where was I? I was in uh, South Carolina for a soccer tournament. So I left from there. 
my daughter had a soccer tournament out there, so mm. I flew out from there after Thanksgiving. How long does it take to fly back to where you are in in America, Carolina? You know what? Uh, that's a good question. I try not to know, to be honest, because uh, uh, it makes time go by faster. Yeah. <laughs> I was, yeah, I was surprised my... you didn't go back for Christmas, though. Is it, is it just too much? or? Uh, no, no, it's, it's not. It's, it's just that, you know, I, I missed, uh, let's see, what, two years ago. I wasn't home for Christmas as well, mm-hmm. so it's it, it's uh it's not that big of a deal for for me to be uh, not home for Christmas. I mean, it's just one day out of the year, mm-hmm. uh, so so I spent a little bit of time at home already. And my kids, you know, they typically uh, go to my mom's house and everything for for Christmas, so it's not it's not like it's it's that big of a deal for them. Oh, okay. I suppose yeah. you had I suppose you had Thanksgiving in uh, in America, but uh, I saw the post actually put on Instagram, and it it really touched me actually the day you were leaving it you you kind of conveyed uh, how you were feeling about having to come back to q8 to kind of obviously pursue what you need to pursue it was quite i, I felt i really felt for you, you know having to say goodbye to your wife and your ch- four children and brandon's yeah. got the best names from his kids of all the marvelous name wow that's yeah, a good yeah, name that... his son yeah, is like... called marvelous oh marvelous <laughs> that's a, yeah. that's a good name man yeah, I don't know if y'all seen y'all seen the Generation Iron series. I explained it. Yeah, on there on the uh, off 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 season with the Currys, mm. and yeah, I, I got that name. I met a marvelous at an airport. I was leaving Dallas, mm. and he had all capital letters. He had marvelous on his name tag, mm. and he was just real smooth, real cool guy. He said, if, "If you need anything, just let him know marvelous sent you." Mm. And you know, and I was I thought about it, and I walked away. I realized I had a first class ticket. I hope I don't have any trouble or nothing. But mm. I, I, I called my wife immediately. I said, "I know what I'm gonna name my next son." Marvelous. So, uh, yeah. Oh, nice. And nice. they're athletes, too. Yeah. They're wrestlers, aren't they? Yeah, they're wrestling season right now. They both play football, American football, and wrestling season is, is, is right now. Marvelous is actually, he hasn't wrestled in two years, mm-hmm. but, man, he's killing it, man. He probably, he'll probably win the state this year. Oh, <laughs> got, yeah, got the genetics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So what, yeah, what ages yeah. are your children, Brandon? Let's see. Let's see. Let me get it right. Five, <laughs> six. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Five, six, nine. He just turned nine and uh, fourteen. Mm. So oh, wow. yeah, <laughs> fourteen. So that you were really young with your first child then. Well, that's that's actually my stepdaughter uh, oh. Zoe. So she's my stepdaughter. Yeah, I met her when I was like when she was like two. Mm. So she's been knowing me practically most of her life. Mm. Fantastic. So obviously, um, you, you know, you it says on your cap there, you're obviously the Arnold. Um, uh, how are you feeling for um, for obviously? What seven weeks? Is it seven weeks now? Seven weeks? Yeah, I think it's so. So it's eight weeks, right? Seven, eight weeks, eight yeah, weeks somewhere around there. Either, either way, I'm confident right now. You know, we uh, we're ahead of schedule. Things are going real smooth. I'm back in my element. Uh, so little, to, little to no margin of error out here. Mm. And we just we just focus on bringing the best, better package. I just think right now it's it's not a lot of pressure. It's not like I got to gain a lot of size. We're just mm. you know bringing the quality, make sure everything balanced and. Uh, like I said, I'm really excited about this show. Really confident going into this show. So, yeah. I, I actually need to grab my phone because I think one of your friends or sp- someone from Kuwait sent me some pictures of you today. Mm. I've got his, his um yeah he, he sent me a private message a few days ago saying look you know thanks for the what you said about Brandon I think it was on one of the last episodes we did and uh, and I said no I said it's fully deserved I said it's not you don't have to thank me I said it's what I think. And because uh, I was saying, you know, about being the dark horse for 2019. And uh, yeah, it's one of your friends. I'm trying to remember his name now. I'm trying to think of it. Was. It, it, may, it may be my coach, Abdullah. Yes. Abdullah, Abdullah, Abdullah may have seen him. That's my coach. Uh, yeah. oh. he, was, he, he, was, he was talking to me about uh, you the other day. We were doing cardio. And he's like, did you see uh, You see what they posted good about you? I said, uh, who's that guy? <laughs> so he's, like, he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, he's really said some nice things. I said, like, yeah, that's, that's, my, that's my guy right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Team guy. Curry. Who is this? Can you explain a little bit more? Who coaches you there? Is it one person or is it different person? Who coaches you? Who train- do you have a training partner? Do you have- how, how is it set up for this Arnold Classic? Well, you know, my, my coach, ever since I've been here, my coach has been Abdullah. He's uh, basically... He's the one that, you know, kind of vouched for me to come out to Oxygen. I met him in uh, 2016 oh, okay. at, uh, at the Olympia between prejudging. Okay. And I, compl- and I complimented him on his work with Victor Martinez. Mm-hmm. And, um, and he was like, man, you want to come out to Kuwait, man? He says, uh, I think I can make you top six in the world. Mm. So, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, well, yeah. So, so I was like, okay, I'm, I'm coming out there in a few weeks for the Kuwait Classic. I'll get a feel and, you know, said so I'll let you know. So I came out to Kuwait for the first time. I really enjoyed it. 
you know, he had studied me. He knew all about my, my previous history. He knew, he knew about some of my best looks. So he was on it. So I was like, man, this guy's he's, he's young and he's really passionate. Mm. And uh, so we had good chemistry and it's, it's been uh, it's been, a uh, you know, what you see ever since. So what's he, his he's background? Definitely... Like what's his back? Is he used to coach other people before this? Yeah, was he a... yeah, he, he, yeah, he coaches. He coaches athletes. You know, Victor Martinez was his first, uh, I guess. Uh, big pro that he coached, but he's coached, you know, Kuwait, they have a big coaching scene out here. So he's been coaching in Kuwait okay. uh, in his gym for a while. Uh, he's, he's, you know, they've been around bodybuilding longer than I think people understand. Yeah. Uh, as far as different Olympias, they was, they, he saw me on stage in 2011 at my first Olympia. Mm -hmm. They were actually there. Oh. So they've been kind of behind the scenes looking at the scene for a long time before anybody really recognized the camel crew. What? So, uh, I mean, these, these guys are, 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 you know, they're really passionate, really, really passionate about the sport. And, uh, you know, and it, and it kind of shows in the reputation that these guys are building in such a short period of time. We were talking about you in the intro and I, was, I couldn't remember the year when you took eighth place when you were prepped by a friend of mine, Neil Hill. That was, was I said 2008, but it wasn't. It, was it 2011? It was 2011. Yes. Ah, 2011. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that was, yeah. that was kind of like your, that was, you know, the top 10. And, and then after that, it was kind of like, fast forward to say 2016, I was talking before about when uh, you were at the press conference at the Olympia and Bob Chick kind of interviewed you last. He was like, so then, Brandon, uh, you know, are you, are we hear rumors you might be coming down to 212. And, and you were like, well, we'll see how it goes. And then after that Olympia, you know, I mean, you didn't do very well at that Olympia. Then you, you didn't come down to 212. You went to Kuwait at the end of 2016. And yeah, I mean, actually, actually, I actually threw a lot of people off at the press conference because I, I agreed with Bob and said, mm. you know, that's a good idea. Yeah. Oh, but I just did that. I just did that to kind of keep keep Bob from from going on and on, you know how Bob. <laughs> so, yeah. and then and then in the back of my mind, I knew they would call some kind of you know talk along. They would carry along into the next uh, yeah, yeah. next season. So everybody was expecting me, of course, to do two two twelve. I had obviously no intentions of doing two twelve. So, oh, right. <laughs> so okay. what, what did you? I mean, this is a funny question, but what did you weigh at that two thousand sixteen Olympia? At that two thousand sixteen Olympia, let's see, I was probably. I was at least two twenties five or something like that, two yeah, twenties yeah. or something like so that. So you had I was no intention. So you had no intention at all going to the two twelve. It was just no, 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 no. no. no okay. I, t I turned, I turned pro as a heavyweight, and I was, you know, but I was turned pro at like what two seventeen, two eighteen mm -hmm. uh, at USA's in uh, yeah. in oh uh, eight. So I just, you know, at that point, so many years after oh eight, I didn't think it was just feasible for me to go backwards. I'm just thinking, has it ever been done where an athlete has been pretty much last call out of the 2016 olympia and then 2017 you were first call out right i mean exactly and has that ever been done I, I i don't think i don't not that i know of you know the craziest thing i've, I've heard of that was the ronnie mm -hmm. going from ninth to first uh from uh, 2000 what 2000 what, five, ni what? 97 98 no not, not, yeah 97 i don't know i think in 2000 <laughs> yeah, 97 98 mm -hmm. but uh yeah that's the craziest thing uh I've heard, you know, so. Mm -hmm. no. But the, like, we can talk about what's going on in Kuwait. We have many questions about that. Yeah. But are you feeling now, you busted into this scene around 2009, 10. There were a lot of hype around. I'm, I live in Norway. Do you know where Norway is? Yes, I, I, I'm from Norway. Yeah. Norway. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's not a town in Sweden. It's a country. <laughs> but anyway, the point is, there we all were like, because we... As kids, especially us with black background, we all had the same beard because of him. You know, we had the yeah. lining back. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. I'm looking at you. I'm seeing a bit of similarity no, no, between the. Uh... 2009, 2010, we saw him in the. Uh, Robert Kennedy used to put a lot of you in the magazines, if you remember. Right. I, I was with Flex. I was with. Uh, I was with. Uh... Muscle Mag as well. Yeah, I had contracts with both of those. Those, and then of course I was with BSN those years too. So it was a lot of, yeah. a lot of promotions. The magazines were still alive back then, so yeah. they were really pumping out the young guys like me, Flex Lewis, Trey, Trey Brewer, Trey back Brewer, in the day. Mm, yeah, yeah, Trey Brewer. Yeah. Yeah. So we were really yeah. hoping and riding for you, and then it kind of like. But now, can you feel the different, can, like the documentaries on Generation Iron, they're like they're making you like into like a household name, mm -hmm. Olympia, fifth place. Mm -hmm. Now, in the most people have you guaranteed in the top three, this Arnold Classic, and some of us have you winning. Mm -hmm. Can you feel it, Brandon? Of course, I, of course I can feel it. You know, it's, it's, life, life is about timing, you know. Uh, a lot of people give up before, you know, they, they're able to see things through. And a lot of times, you know, it's just about being patient, being persistent. 
uh, believing in you know the mission and the goals you want to achieve, and uh, you know being stubborn about it. And, and I'm really good at being stubborn. So, you know, I, I just think it's 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 time, and man, it's just uh, it's just my, my my time to just mm. to, to to do what I need to do. It's just yeah, I got this. Everybody kind of knew about me in the beginning. I had this big start. Everybody knew my name, and then kind of faded away for a minute, mm. as uh, fate would have it. H- handling family, try to balance all that. Mm. But you know, now I'm back. I'm back mm. on the scene. So back, back being a threat again. Mm. <laughs> no, it's gonna. It's, uh, he should come out uh, on the on the Musk Development Forum boards. We are always hyping you, but before you use the same theme music. Uh, same we, posing. The posing. Remember? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And yeah, I yeah, asked yeah. his wife, "Hey, uh, on the forums." Can you please tell Brandon <laughs> to put on a new song? And at Olympia, you switch it up a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I've, I've probably, I probably switched it up a little bit more. But I think a lot of people, you know, didn't take notice of me during a, during those dead periods. But yeah, I mean, I'm always, uh, I'm always looking to do something new. Anything I feel, you know. Come out to John Cena. My time is now. <laughs> is that, oh, I see you as wrestling talk. No, but now his time is yeah, now. It's, yeah, not, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Brandon's time now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see that. I think so. Absolutely. So, I mean, obviously, you're still with SciTech. How's that going? Uh, SciTech, you know, I love the company, man. They they really take care of me. You're a big brand, and of course, in Europe. Mm, they're uh, big in Europe. Sorry. Mm. Big, big brand in Europe. And and it's quality. It's good being with a quality supplement company that, you know, you believe in everything that they do, with everything they put in, and, you know, they batch test all their products. It's uh, it's something that, about being with some, a company that has integrity in these day and ages. Yeah. Where you got a lot of controversy with protein spiking and all that kind of thing. So, of course, I can rely on using the products uh, all throughout my, my prep. I don't have to worry about uh, anything hidden, anything uh, mm. for pl- proprietary blends and all, all that whatnot. But it's been a great company. Allowed me to travel the world. Mm. Allowed me, uh, supported me being in Kuwait, helping me support my family while I'm away. So, you know, I can't, can't thank these guys enough, man. It's been, been an awesome, awesome experience with these. Obviously, this they, they have uh, Cedric McMillan as well on the team. And um, hey. and Cedric said he actually really does enjoy the traveling. And it's quite extensive, some of the traveling you guys do. I mean, after, was it 2017, uh, I interviewed you. Actually, Rosie interviewed at the um, Arnold Europe because you'd done the Olympia and then you didn't do the Arnold Europe. And you said, no, I'm, I'm traveling. I'm not, I'm, I'm not competing. I'm just going to keep... I've got a lot of traveling to do with SciTech. Do you actually enjoy the traveling? I enjoy the traveling because I, you know, I like I like people, man, and, and I like to get around and experience different cultures. I like trying different foods, so it's it's it's, it's just uh, it's a part of the work and just kind of meeting people that would never get to meet you, mm. except seeing you online and seeing them in person and taking the time to get a picture and them telling you stories about this and that. You know, it just kind of it kind of energizes you. You know, even though it could be a long, tiring day, mm-hmm. it can energize you mentally. You know. And get you that motivation to keep to keep pushing, and you know it's not just all the people talking junk on uh, mm. on social media and everything. Mm. It's it's actually people out that's out there just really uh, being encouraging and hoping that you do well. So I mean, Cedric said he met one guy, and he, um, um, it was a tour in Japan, and uh, he had a um, someone to come to see him, and the guy said like he was crying. Yeah, talking to Cedric, saying you know you're someone that's really he'd actually lost um, a great deal of weight. And um, Cedric kind of connected with him and said, "Okay, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you know, s- stay in contact because I really want to stay part of your journey, you know, uh, um, more prominently. You know, mm. it's like he really, uh, I suppose, that's probably one of the the good and the bad sides of being a, a professional bodybuilder and traveling with supplement companies that you get to kind of connect with those mm. kinds of people. You know, I, I can't tell you, I can't tell you how many times I've had people come up to me and show me old pictures of them and saying." You know, you really motivated me, and you don't even recognize them. Mm. Yeah, yeah, you know, I can't, yeah. Can't, can't imagine. And I, I, I got guys that are uh, big in the industry that uh, I talked to way back in the day at Expos. Just spent some time talking to them, and next thing you know, they turn around, and they become big personalities and whatnot. Mm. You know, mm. and follow their fitness dreams. So you just never know how you can impact people, and how can you be used to you know change people's lives and motivate them to go the right direction. So mm-hmm. I just don't take that for granted, man. It's kind of like a responsibility uh, I feel for the uh, platform mm. that we that we put on. Mm-hmm. Is SciTech from Eastern, uh, where is it from? Which country? Hungary, Hungary. Yeah, because I've seen those videos with him and Cedric with the bikini girls down in Hungary. <laughs> 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 and then, <laughs> with techno music. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's, cool. that's, that's, that's probably Muscle Beach. You think about Muscle Beach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Beach out there. And, yes. and back in the day, we used, they have this supplement called 
protein delight, I think it is. With the, yeah, 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 protein oh, delight. Oh, yeah. that's yeah. with the white chocolate. Is that the red tubs? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, man, yeah they got it. They got it. They got it in the RTDs now. So oh. the refrigerator oh. RTD. So yeah, you got great so tasting protein. That's yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Do, do you ever get involved with the product development? Oh, you know, they gave us the opportunity a couple of years ago to come up with some ideas. They bounced some ideas off of us when they came out with the pro line. But, uh, you know, as of recently, uh, not much, but a lot of a lot has changed as far as ownerships and different things. So we're getting to know the new the new system, the new people that are that are running the company, which, you know, I, I thoroughly enjoy. Uh, but they, they they're you know, each each group of people that come in, they have different ideas for the company, different things they want to do. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's just kind of uh, evolving with the company and trying to represent the brand as best as best as you can. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, no matter no matter what no matter who's 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 leading the uh, the wheel so mm. I'm just I'm just glad I'm I'm uh, I'm an asset to the company and uh, they still see me valuable so oh you're gaining now so, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like yeah. who's your let's get put you who's your main competition this Arnold Classic give me two guys mm. only two guys I know there's a lot of good guys but give us two names oh you know it's gotta be my friends you know my friends are, 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 are probably my biggest rivalry you know you got William Bonac who's the champion. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he, of course, he knows I'm coming to challenge him. And, you know, it's just respect uh, as a former competitor. And, you know, Roly Winkler uh, enters his show. Of course, we're teammates. Mm-hmm. And that's a, just another guy, you know, he's just going to have a, have to battle and, you know, see who's the top dog on the day. So, mm-hmm. you know, all these guys I respect, man. And, you know, I love personalities. I spend personal time with these guys. And, uh, you know, I like to see them do well. I like to see them, them to, to win. I mean, I hung out with William after the Arnold last year, after he won. Mm-hmm. So, uh, but but now I'm just gonna be on stage trying to uh, win that title with myself. So, it's just a healthy camaraderie and uh, competition. But uh, I respect all these guys. But you know, I, I think if I can bring my best, you know, I can be the the, the top dog on that stage come uh, March. We've seen your name on the competitor list for the Arnold in Columbus, the Arnold in mm. Australia. Oh, I'm mm. assuming you're gonna do the Olympia. Have you got your any ideas of doing any other shows apart from those three? Well, we know we know the Arnold for sure. Uh, we're still uh, uh, not for certain about the uh, Australia. We got the invite. We're not for certain about that. But as, after this, this initial spring season, we're going right to the uh, Olympia. Olympia is the main focus. I'm gonna spend some time at home, uh, regroup, uh, enjoy some uh, time with the kids. Probably, hopefully, catch the end of wrestling season, mm. uh, and then <laughs> uh, and then uh, and then you know it's back to uh, you know trying to get focused and regroup. So. For the Olympia in the summertime. So. Yeah, so I mean, we've got obviously like we've got a, a an open show in the UK in June. There was obviously the Prague. I mean, talking about more like European shows. Uh, would you consider doing some other shows, maybe like post Olympia shows as well? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, we'll consider post Olympia shows. Uh, that stint pretty much depends on how my body feels. Like, right. You know, it depends on how wore down. It's, you know, I am coming into the Olympia, uh, but it's it's. It's always on my on my agenda if if I feel up to it to do that show. If the prep hasn't been excessively strenuous, then I'm I you know I can go out there and get some extra money at the end of the season. You know. Yeah. <laughs> did you, did you stay in um, good shape after the after the Olympia? Uh, do I, I mean I was you know that's kind of was the plan. Uh, I remember <laughs> sending my coach pictures and I I wasn't fat, but I you know I was heavier than he wanted. And he was like, <laughs> nah. He was like, no, I don't want you to be that heavy. I don't want you to be that heavy right now. He says, yeah. I want you to, I want you to be lighter. So he asked more cardio, changed the diet around because he was, he, he says, this is not, he says the goal was different for him, mm-hmm. for us, I guess you say. And uh, he didn't want me to just, he wouldn't, he wouldn't want me to push the weight. You know, he didn't want me to stress my body in that fashion. So, mm-hmm. you know, it's just quality on the stage is what we need to bring. And uh, he's the exact can win with the, uh, a package that doesn't have to be uh, excessively uh, different than than I brought to the stage before. Just, just improved. Uh, conditioning and you got nailed it on that day what what improvements were you looking to make for this Arnold Classic from the Olympia well the the improvements that you know I always uh, look to make is you know I know the muscle maturity is going to come so I'm just training and and we're focusing on the quality training make sure each rep is quality make sure I'm you know taking everything to uh, to failure and uh, really pushing myself but with quality and control and the legs, the legs in general is, is what I've been working on, the frontal, the frontal thickness of the legs, the quads yeah. in general. And I think over this, uh, this past offseason, my time at home and then my time here so far has really uh, helped show that with some of the things that I put on, on, on the Internet. So uh, that's been one of the focuses. But we, we want to come tighter in the midsection. Uh, we just, you know, it's just the back. We want the back to be more detailed. I, uh, yeah, the back. Glutes I, and hams, they'd be more clear. 
Yeah, because I, 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 that was probably the main criticism I had of you from your physique at the Olympia. Your back is mm. absolutely insane. But when I was actually at the Olympia watching, I was like, I would love to see a little bit more detail in that back because there is so much thickness and so much width there. Um, mm. I just thought when, when that guy gets some little bit more detail in his back, that's going to be game over. Mm. Yeah, we, uh, we dropped some. I don't know if you probably, you may have got the pictures. He took some uh, pictures of my back the other day. And already this far out, my back is uh, showing a lot more detail than... Uh, it normally would this this far out so you know that's one of the focuses and it's just basically been about the quality of the training you know mm -hmm. not being sloppy you know not not just you know just just trying to move weight around but really just focusing on you know getting quality out of each and every rep pushing everything to, to uh you know positive failure mm -hmm. and uh just knowing when to push knowing when to when to pull back so i've been really really focused on that this this prep but do you see roly winkle in the gym are you training with roly by the way Am I training with who? With Roly Winkler. Are you training with him? Do you have the same coach? No. Like, is this a little bit like... No, no, no. Roly, Roly, trains, Roly trains with Oscar, and uh, he's not even in Kuwait right now. Oh. Uh, so he, I think he, they said maybe next week. I think he'll be be here. Mm -hmm. But I train, I train with my coach. My coach, he's, uh, he's tenacious, and he likes to go through the process with me. Okay. Because, you know, he, he wants to know how I feel. He wants to know... You know what's going on. He wants to know how you know you know how are we pushing. He wants to he wants to be engulfed. He does he does hours of cardio oh. as well. He, oh, he, just, he, he, so he, he does it with you. Yeah, with you. Yeah. Yeah. He, wow. Yeah, he likes to he likes to experience the prep with me. He, he wants this to is a, in the trenches. This yes. is a coach. Huh? That's a real coach. Yeah, this is a coach. Yeah. yeah, he wants to be in the trenches, man. And uh, and you know I really respect that because he's just like I say he's just. He says, you know, training with me, being in the gym with me it motivates him as well. Mm. But he wants to make sure he's pushing me mentally and he's, he's he's there for my needs you know so he's not wow. going to be hands off but we got some other uh, guys that's training training a guy from australia uh, another pro uh named andy crawford uh he's he's training with us every day who's this and another uh, no. andy crawford is a guy from australia he's he's been out in uh kuwait <laughs> for like i think it's a somewhere around seven to nine months now oh all right just train okay. just train yeah just training trying to improve he just brought himself out and one of those guys who just wanted to come out and, and improve bodybuilding Wow. And uh, so he's 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 uh, been training hard, working with us uh, every day, trying to get us a push. And then we got a uh, another physique guy that comes in and kind of trains. Uh, been training from India, which is one of uh, my coach's clients. Okay. And he'll come he'll come in and train as well, named Yash. But you know, but really, my coach he's, he's he says I'm gonna know I'm his number one focus <laughs> no matter what. Oh, okay. And, and, and you know, he and he's uh and he's pretty much uh, making sure you know everything that I do. He's he's overseeing it. He's making sure I'm pushing. He's making sure, you know, he, he's, he's, he's hands on 100%. So, so is, it the, is it the main oxygen gym you train at? Because I know that there was the, the original one, and then was it seven, eight years ago he opened the newest one? And I, I heard he was opening a new one with a huge, it was absolutely colossal. Which, so how many, how many oxygen gyms are there currently? <laughs> uh, currently, uh, currently there, are, there are four, I believe oh, there are four built, okay. uh, but, only, but only three open. Okay. So I think that the fourth one is, is pretty much, I think it's pr mostly done. Uh, he said he's going through uh, deals with the ministry right now, trying to get uh, everything clear so he can open. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's the biggest one. And then oh, he's wow. got, uh, he's got a one he's going into Qatar. Okay. And then uh, Saudi Arabia, he showed me the, the, the plans for Saudi Arabia. And it's oh. going to be one of the biggest gyms mm -hmm. in the world in Saudi Arabia. So it's going to be crazy. So wow. uh, yeah, he, he's, he's on a move. I trained it, yeah, the second edition which is just home to us. And I live right next door and it's just, we're just so used to it here. Yeah. If I go to the, 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 the third one that's built, the, the latest one is open. It's just overwhelming, you know, so much equipment <laughs> in there. <laughs> You're like, how, how do you, how, I've always wondered, cause I remember Kevin Horton telling me about when Oxygen Gym cut the new one, the, the second one, the second one opened. And he said, Charles, he says, if you want to do like back, he said, you've got 25 machines. I've always wondered because American gyms and these kind of gyms are so much bigger than what, us Brits are used to how do you decide which I mean I would literally I remember I went to an American gym when I was 15 years old and it was in Rhode Island and it was uh, 20,000 square feet and I remember just wandering around it's pre-planned oh, I didn't know what to I was like oh god it was too much equipment how do you it, who, it's planned it's, before it's about, isn't it? it's, a, it's about a feel you know you get a, in a gym you got experience right it's about a feel each machine or each piece of equipment is going to give you a certain feel mm. so uh, you know we're, we're trying to especially like the back we're trying to attack them from all different angles so Wherever we feel incomplete, we you know we look for that machine that we like that's gonna hit that spot. Mm. Now, Batter is very good about bringing new pieces in. So let's say what a couple of weeks ago he brought in three new back pieces, and we just surprised with us on the floor. So 
we're uh, <laughs> we went in there. We tried those pieces out a little bit, trying to see where they're going to fit in, when we can use them, what they hit the most, what kind of variations we do on them. And, you know, it's just so it just opens up your perspective of training. So he's always changing things, always everything new. And the thing about him, he removes all the logos and everything off the machine. So you don't know. You don't know who made it. Oh, really? You know, he, you know, you know, you know yeah, everything's yeah. kind of, he likes it like that. He don't, you know, he likes, you know, he don't want everybody to come in and copy his stuff. So, so before he puts anything on the floor, he takes all the logos, everything off, oh, wow. puts it on the floor. And uh, yeah, so, so you don't even know where it came from sometimes. So he'll cherry pick from different uh, manufacturers, not just all hammer strength or all oh, uh, yeah. strength. Oh, yeah. I'm in the office. I come in the office with him and he's at this computer right here. I'm in the office right now. And he's just looking at stuff, and he'll ask me my opinion on this right here. He says, I think about getting this one. What do you think about that? What do you think about this? <laughs> yeah. So, you know, so he's always planning. And he's about to change this one. This is the second one that uh, Kevin Horton saw. Mm -hmm. He's about to uh, take, uh, I think he said, the spin area and the uh, fitness group fitness area or or the CrossFit style area. He's going to put it downstairs because we have a basement in this gym. Mm -hmm. and he's about to expand uh, level one, so we had to be more equipment. So <laughs> in there, so he's all he's always ambitious about you know improving and expanding, yeah. and you know he's he's never satisfied with what, you know what he's. Uh, so it's, it's good to be a member at this gym because things are always yeah always upgraded, always changing. So Is, and if people don't use a piece, he'll take it off the floor. Oh, really? Oh, wow, that's cool. Yeah. So is it? So he's, it he's, he's totally hands on all the time. So I've always wondered. It seems to be a lot of machines. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you do, I mean, I, I very rarely see many, certainly many photo shoots where you're doing much free weights. Is it, is it say mm -hmm. like majority machines training? Well, you got to think about it. It's only so many free weight pieces of equipment <laughs> in general. You no, know, I mean, you I'm, talking about your, I'm talking about your training in general. Is it mostly um, geared towards like 90% no, no, no. machines? My, my coach in, in particular, he likes, he always likes the free weights first. Like he's a free weight guy first. So he likes to put, you know, your free weight movements in. Typically at the beginning, he always, you know, likes to likes to do free weights. He likes the squat. He likes to do everything. Okay. So, but we have so much variety of machines here, and we use a higher volume style of training that they they, they come in, of course, to a great degree when you're trying to fit, finish a muscle off, you know, yeah, or yeah. really focus on a particular area because you know some guys that they they can't they don't have the muscle uh, the muscle uh, to you know a muscle mind connection to kind of take up some free weight movements and put it where they need to put it. Right. You know, so sometimes you can sit in this machine and without much adjustment at all, you can hit the exact area that you need to you need to hit weakness or whatever it may be without much without much teaching, without much coaching. You know, so it's uh, it's the machines have their advantage and uh, we, we use them. We use them quite a bit. But like I said, we don't neglect free weights at all. We, I mean, it's, it's plenty of free weights uh, setups around this gym. We got a nice uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, T bar row that they, they just put in, which you, it's like a kneeling one. You put your chest on. Kneeling. It's a free bar. Okay. And yeah, and, and it's it, it's it's perfect, man. It's like it's it's it hits you hits that lower lower lat area perfectly. So yeah, you, it, he's he, he's bringing those pieces in too. So it's not all all machines. Yeah, you do need to bring your back up a bit, like <laughs> <laughs> crazy crazy back. Like a, looks like a cobra. But this Bader Budai person, yeah, wow. Yeah. It's, it's strange that we don't hear more about him in the I, American media. And I, like, yeah. he should be more like, this is epic what he's doing. This is groundbreaking. Uh, they, this is not, that Bra hasn't been done before. Yeah, Bra Brandon, I remember <laughs> when, um, when, like I said, when Kevin Horton told me, it was probably seven, eight years ago about Bader. And he said he started up uh, with coffee shops, wasn't it? It was coffee shops. Yeah, he had, was, he had it, like it, numerous it like, coffee yeah, shops. Coffee style shops, yes. So it's like he amazing how there. how this guy's you know really grown his business. It's incredible. Yeah. It's like well, before we that, before that, before that, he he said his story was much like the Fast and the Furious. Before he used to, he used to, he used to street race. Oh, <laughs> oh really? <laughs> he yeah. did. Yeah. Well, and drifting, he, and he, drifting. And he had a, yeah. He had a, Wow. He had a car garage where they souped up cars, and that's like his first his oh, first start business. Wow. Of course, they used to bet and stuff back in the day too on races. So he says it's much like the Fast and the Furious story. It's like much like his starting story. Oh. <laughs> and I, I heard I heard stories about Dennis Wolf and Dennis James being given like a list when they arrived when they first came over, and it was a list of all these different supercars. And he says, okay, which one do you want? It's like a Ferrari, Lamborghini. And like Dennis would say, okay, I'll drive this one for a few days. And then he says, well, when you get bored, you can swap it over. And we'll, And he would just bring these cars and be delivered. And the keys would be dropped off to their apartments. And what are the questions we haven't heard about from the, the, the Oxygen Gym that you want to ask? That's, is there something like, because there's something, there's a lot of myth, mystery, mystery, thing. Mystery, yeah, mystery. Are you allowed to have your girlfriends over there if you wanted to? 
Uh, wife. I mean, I'm wife. Sure. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> no, I, man, not I for we, him, but for I, different. I know. I know. I know. Regan's girlfriend uh, came to visit. Uh, I don't, I don't, before I left, but I know she came to visit before he actually left Kuwait. Uh, I know um, Andy, the, the pro I train with, his wife is actually here. Okay, so it's allowed. Uh, she's temporarily li- temporary living here, and uh, she's uh, oh, cool. and she's working in Kuwait actually. So, oh. I mean, it, there's not women don't typically come in the gym. It's, it's a male only facility. Yeah. So if you see a woman in here, you kind of look at her strange because she's like, oh, you don't see it much. No. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's not like you know they're not allowed or they're forbidden. You know, it's just. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. If my wife wants my wife wants to come to Kuwait, and my kids are too busy. You know, I don't know. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. She she just it's just not it's just not uh, feasible for her with the lifestyle that, that she she lives and my kids live. So, uh, you know, it's, and it's kind of better for me just to be focused, and uh, you know, kind of makes you hungrier when you have that time that time away. Yeah, of course. And, you know. I, <laughs> see, I understand. I understand the focus and the lack of distraction and stuff like that. But I always sometimes wonder: Do these guys actually get bored? You know, being away from their partners and they're, you know, they're training, they've done the cardio, they've eaten the food. What do they do in between? I mean, are they just sat playing video games or are they actually, what, what else, what do you actually do what's in your spare two, time? Yeah, what's your yeah. Three, three things you do other than training, eating, and I mean, must relaxing? Get homesick. I must get homesick. Uh, I'm, a pretty, I'm a pretty boring type guy, so it's not like I need a lot of stimulation okay. to, uh, to uh, keep my day going. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll watch a little TV here and there. I do a little reading here and there. Um, but you know, I'm I'm I don't need a lot. I, I don't need to be babysit. I don't need a lot of stimulation. Uh, I'm not gonna go crazy. You know, I, I'll probably do I'll probably do good in the cell. You know, I'll be, I, I, I could solitary. <laughs> I was I, I, I was I was the only I was the only boy. You know, growing up, so I spent mm-hmm. a lot of time to myself. So I don't I don't really think about the lack thereof or the lack of activity and stuff like that. I'm not here for I'm not here for all that anyway. Yeah. I'm here to get, get work done. <laughs> I mean, I mean, obviously, what you know, when you went over there, I mean, you just completely, your physique, everything just completely exploded for you. So obviously being in that environment, I mean, it, it kind of worked in a different way for Dorian. In the 90s, he kind of had very, there's no distraction. I mean, as I understand it, uh, in Kuwait, there's no distraction. There's kind of nowhere to go outside. There's not a lot to do apart from eat, sleep, train, relax, you know, do what you need to I mean, do. You know, if you want to eat, if you want to eat and then, you know, have a free diet, there's a lot of good food around here. Here. Okay. Uh, a lot of good restaurants, a lot of different American chains and stuff. So sometimes we go out with the fellas and we spend time out, we go to different places and eat. They have a huge mall here, yeah. uh, you know, huge mall. Pretty much find anything in there if you really willing to go in there and just walk, walk and walk. Uh-oh. But uh, but yeah, I mean, it's it's things to do. It's just you know, it's no alcohol. It's not a lot of partying. It's you know, it's not it's, you know, that's the thing a lot of people are missing. Yeah. But. Uh, but we still have we still see some interesting stuff going on. Cool. I think I, there's I, some I, hidden parties around there. If you want. <laughs> oh man, uh, oh man, that was a party. That was a party upstairs for me uh, a couple nights ago. Oh. That was uh, <laughs> that was pretty. That was pretty lit. Uh, that was pretty lit. I didn't go, but uh, Chris Cormier is handling neighbors. the after parties there, huh? Chris Cormier. No, I heard from my neighbors, you know, and I could oh. hear them uh, from my room, so I know they were they were getting down. So. Okay. Uh, so some things go down. You just got to know the right people, apparently. Okay. Brandon. Brandon. <laughs> Oh, it's a simple question. Do you like Kuwait? Do I like it? Uh, Do you like, I like it? I like it. Yeah, I have, I have no. I, you know, I was kind of surprised how much I, I like actually, actually like Kuwait. And right now, it's 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 cooler than you would think. Sixty degrees every day. Oh, that's good. <laughs> you John, know, you're not, asking a man if he likes the place, and he's there. You no, want him to no, say, no, 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 no. Well, say no? He's there for. It. What I'm <laughs> yeah, saying is, AJ, yeah. he's there for a purpose, and I understand yeah. that. And he's doing what he needs to do, and it's working. But I ever actually wonder, do they actually like the place? I mean, does he actually? Is it somewhere that you know he would maybe miss if he went? You know, I don't know. Only, yeah, yeah. I, I, I think I would always be willing to come back and visit if I left Kuwait. And, you know, yeah, you that's know. what I was getting it's, at. It, it's, it's, <laughs> it, you know, the, the people, the people here are cool. You know, so I've, I've got I got a lot of fans here that, that, that follow me in Kuwait. A lot of guys are real cool here, and you know, it's it's just an interesting place, man. It's it's, it's it kind of kind of grow have grown on me over the, over the so past few years. So yeah, it's it's very close to Bahrain, isn't it? Because I remember speaking to Samuel Haddad, and he said, "Oh, I do some personal training at Oxygen." I says, "But you're from Bahrain," and he says, "Oh no, I, I drive over. How far is it?" Uh, I've flown to Bahrain, so it's a short flight. From oh, it's here. a flight, flight. Mm. Okay. Yeah, yeah, but I know there's a bridge that. That because t- Bahrain is an island, <laughs> yeah. so they, I, they, apparently there's a bridge that you know that can take you from the, okay. the mainland to the island. But I, I haven't taken that way; I've only flown. Mm. So uh, you know, but I guess Bahrain is a, probably a little bit more liberal place. I know you can drink there and stuff like that. Okay. You can't do that here, but uh, but it's 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 really close. And I know Bahrain is hot though, because I went. It's even hotter than Kuwait, I think. 
Mm. But uh, yeah, so I went in summertime. So, but it's 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 close. So I, I think if you want to party and if you want to see uh, that life, you can go to Dubai, which is like three hours of flight, or you can go to Bahrain, mm-hmm. or whatever, or whatever to get away and do that kind of stuff. So, you know, they have their options. Apparently. How do the people treat you when you go outside the? <laughs> like, are bodybuilders very popular, or are, do people ask you for autographs? Do they want to touch your muscles, and how's how's that thing going over there? <laughs> Well, here, 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 here in Jabria, it's like a city, so it's kind of trafficy in front of the gym. So, a lot of times you can be walking, like I'll walk to Bada's restaurant and get some eat, and somebody will stop me and weigh me down. You know, they don't want a selfie or whatever with me and stuff like that. Mm. Or they say, "Oh, champ, oh champ, oh champ, or coach, a coach." You know, so a lot of people they they recognize you, they recognize bodybuilders out here, and you know everybody's pretty much. If they're not, they just mind their own business. Mm. But then you got some of the guys that I guess uh, domestic workers that come from different parts of the world. They they see you and they freeze, you know. <laughs> like I'm sitting I'm sitting at a restaurant yesterday with Oscar and I'm sitting there at Oscar's restaurant. He has a health studio out here, and uh, I was sitting there and we we're sitting outside and the guy walks up. He's a delivery guy, and so he's going in to get food and bring it out. He just I guess he's staring at me. My coach looks at me looks at him and says, "You like you like muscle?" <laughs> and he's just there. Josh, and he's this like, place is where we want to go, bro. Brandon, uh, I've got a bit of a personal story. Do you remember in the end of two, was it 2010, 2000, early 2011, when we walked into that little English pub in Cumbria, in Barrow and Furnace? Now, I yeah. walked into this very, it's a little village in the kind of quite a picturesque part of the UK. And I in walks me with a few friends and uh, Brandon in a very tight T-shirt. So we go and sit down and we, we order some food and get some red wine. And, and then the, the barman leans over to me and he says, oh, excuse me. He says, uh, is that guy so-and-so, the UFC fighter? UFC and I, fighter? I, no, no, no. I said, <laughs> I said, yeah, it is. But don't disturb him. Don't disturb. He says, I knew it was him. Oh. <laughs> it was like, he just, I mean, he just saw this big UFC guy. UFC fighter with those arms. Hell oh, my no. God. You want to get hit by one of them? Yeah. Jeez. Yeah, that was that was yeah, that was um yeah, well, that you was You know, you know, to this day, to this day I've never had fish and chips better than that. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I asked. Fish and he chips. Say, I said, what do you fancy for, for eat, to eat, uh, Brandon? He says, "Oh, I got some fish and chips." How was and, it? Was it good? Man, it was the best fish and chips I've had <laughs> oh, ever. It was. Ever. Yeah. Oh. Back hole in the wall pub, yeah, you know. Oh. Yeah, and, and then we, the we, best, we and I kept sort of buying him uh, lots of red wine because I like my red wine and we all got uh, yeah, he's an athlete we don't speak sorry about sorry no 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 red yeah, wine this no, was no. eight years ago it was many okay. years ago this was when he was on the rise so uh, well, well, wine, wine is healthy though it's not healthy it's y'all. very good for resvi- of, resvi- little, little bit is good for you yeah. Yeah. exactly yeah. Uh, will there be any shows like are you looking to Kuwait gym oxygen gym will there be any YouTube channels so, will it be because you have all these people there all your st- yeah. why don't you guys make something cool soon bro like youtube channel like we want to see what's going on uh they uh, apparently they do have uh, some things going on i actually did a short film filming with a guy uh, a couple of days ago okay but they do a little things here and there with this, to social media some of the projects are just uh arabic based so you'll probably never even see them right but it's a, always it's always some kind of cameras or media in here with us the news okay uh, a lot of it's local stuff so where can we check of, this out I, I, that's what I, I don't even know. I mean, it's pretty much the, the Arabic-speaking community here. Okay. You know, it's kind of kind of their thing. Sometimes I've even I'm doing my cardio and I'll be watching TV and I do a feature in, inside of one of the gyms here. You know, of course I don't know what they're talking about, but I know I know what the gyms look like. So, mm-hmm. but uh, you know, so they do some things for the community around here. Uh, as far as internationally, you know, I don't I don't know. I don't I don't know what the plans are. I'm sure if anybody would come out here and is willing to do it, of course they'll they'll be uh, definitely willing to. Put that stuff out. So. Oh, you think me and me and you and me should go over? Go and in stuff? there. And <laughs> okay. Make videos with Winkler and Brandon. Yeah. Come on, it'll be epic. I want a, a Lamborghini. You don't th- need nothing. We go I, for free. We do I want a Diablo to drive, uh, please. I'll forget about all them cars. Oh uh, yeah, and let me put this out there. Batter is not a prince. You know, he's not a prince. Everybody got this misconception. He's yeah. a prince. Oh really? So let me put that, he's okay. not a prince. Okay. He was. He wasn't born royalty. You know, he's a he's a businessman. That <laughs> that's what I also want to know more because they talked him when he came on the scene. Other channels are hyping him as a guy who just has a lot of money and that he hasn't worked for it no. and that he's royal family. And as you say, <laughs> nah, he's, nah, nah. you know, he's building coffee. Self made, self made. Self made. And that's epic, you know? It's, uh... Yeah, it's self made. His, uh, his father uh, was, was a wealthy man, but I think when he was around seven or so years old, he lost everything in the stock market oh. <laughs> and, oh, really? and never got it back. Oh, no. So, so that, I guess that built, built some of his ambition, you know? Because you know he, you know he, he saw him lose everything. So, 
Oh, wow. That's why he's a bitch to his day. Yeah. And he's challenged. So, yeah, he's definitely self-made. Man. I, he had, I heard that given... um, uh, Kevin Horton told me when he first went over, he said he was uh, he walked in and he said he was very surprised to see how small Bader's office was. It wasn't big and grand. He said it, he said it was almost just like a broom cupboard. And he said, and Bader said, well, no, I want to stay grounded. I want to stay humble and I want to be reminded and still have that work ethic, even when I'm kind of, you know, successful. I don't want the big grand desk. And he says, I, I, I kind of... Yeah, so yeah, is is that still the case? I'm, 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 I'm in here right now. So oh I'm wow, in, okay. Right oh, now. that's his office. <laughs> oh, that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. See, I don't oh, see my oh, nice. right there. Oh, <laughs> who's that? Who? That's him. That's yeah. bothered on the top. Yeah, that's him. That's, that's yeah. him. That's him. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah, I'm in it right. I'm in it right now. So yeah, well, one, outside his uh, office, quiet here. <laughs> one thing though, Brandon, Arnold Classic now. Three people, very cl- four people might be close. Five people can win it. <laughs> They judge routines here, Brandon. You yes. Remember uh, mm. Kai uh, yep. won over Cedric because of the routine? You remember that thing? Right, Brandon, right. who... You, I, I we think got to practice... Po- I'm not AJ, saying you're AJ, a bad poster. AJ, I think Brandon's a very good poser, but I yes, think he's yes. capable of even better. No, I'm just saying now, <laughs> if you guys look equally or the same, you know what I mean? You can win by be giving a better routine than the other one in this show. It's the only show in the world <laughs> where you can win on routines, Brandon. Who's helping I, you I out with, with your you. routines? I agree with you. Uh, you know, we got uh, normally when Chris is here, he's not in town. But my coach, he's, he specifically said, you know, he wants to help me uh, present myself better on stage this year. And he's he's got some plans for me. So we're going to walk through it with him. He's got some ideas and some shots. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let him allow me to help, allow him to help since it counts. I haven't done an Arnold in years. So I would, I, you know, yeah. so it's like I haven't done a, you know, this where they actually, I guess, score the posing. I, yeah, th- I, I, I think so. I think what we're getting at is something me, myself and AJ were talking about in the intro. We were talking about the 90s style posing where proper choreographed routines, yeah. two, three minutes, not kind of three, four poses and then like a guest posing. And I, I, I do believe I've seen the way you pose, the way you hit your poses, your transitions. I think you're capable of very, very 90s level posing, you know, that would be... And I just think, I just think it, when everything is kind of close between the guys, I think it, it can give an edge. Yeah, but like here just, is the only show that it actually does. Exactly, yeah. So why, why not sort of, uh, you know, if you've got the time and you've got people to help you with that, I would love to. I mean, I'm going to be at the Arnold Classic, so I'm really excited to see. I, I, I go for the poster. It's like William Bonnick is a very good poser. He's Cedric good McMillan's poster. a very good poser. And it's kind of what we look forward to. And especially yeah. when you've got like a, a, he's got the kind of massive today, but he's actually got quite a classic shape as well. And he is a good transitional poser. Mm. I personally would love to see a real. I, I would. I'll be going crazy. Yeah, because we're rooting for. We can say oh. public. Yeah, we we rooting okay, for. Okay, just, yeah. just for you guys. I, don't, I, I won't let you down. I won't you let yeah. you down. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, but I, it's like I, to, I totally agree with you. I totally agree with you on that. And, and yeah. I'm, I'm come on, Brandon. Because so. we're rooting for. I, I can say it loud. I'm rooting for Brandon or Winkler to win. That's my. You know, that's my guys. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. then if Brandon is in the mix physique wise. And it's, if it's only that extra effort into the routine mm-hmm. to make him win, bro. Oh, oh, there we go. Oh, we've lost him. We lost him. What happened? <laughs> what happened there? Music, do, do, do. Sorry, not today. Okay, we've got him back. Oh, take your snap. Sorry, guys. What happened no, there? Sorry, Did he yeah. tap something? Did he tap nah, something? Somebody, <laughs> somebody, something else. Somebody, I got I got an interference on a call. Hang oh. on, what, what's this? What's this? Okay, okay, we got, okay. okay. Sorry, we got you back there. No, Sorry. it's just that like when, because I was surprised when, when uh, they said, oh yeah, when they said Kai won it because of posing. Really? You know, yeah, they said it. Remember he Did came they? out with Cedric and he said Cedric was leading because, oh, oh there was something Yeah, you know, they, they, yeah? They, 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 they say, they said that. So yeah, you have to, you have to take that and, and agree with that so yeah. that Kai was that close you know mm-hmm. and you know that makes it that makes it uh that, it gives a little bit of storyline to it it makes it a little bit more uh a, a little bit more hype and a little bit more but I guess uh controversial said Ar- Arnold so. said it wasn't it uh yeah well Arnold, oh, but, a, Arnold loves good posing but sometimes they say things Arnold just I don't know if Arnold said it but I know it was said so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah so when was the last time you did <laughs> when was the last time you just said there when was the last time you did the Arnold yeah Shoot, it could have been like 2014, I think. Uh, oh, wow, okay. It's the last time I made did the Arnold. Yeah, yeah. You won in Brazil, uh, won Arnold, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, I won 16. Arnold Brazil, yeah. and I won Arnold Australia. Uh, was it two two years ago? Not last year, but the year before. Yeah. Yep. But I'm talking about the Arnold, the Arnold Classic Columbus. It's yeah. been like since 2014, I think. So. Oh, okay. Why is that? 
I don't know. I, I don't know. I just, <laughs> I just never uh, desired to do it. Uh, I mean, I mean, I know I was there last year, and they was like, "When are you gonna do it?" I said, "Oh, I said, well, I'll do it. I'll do it next year, which is this year." Mm-hmm. So, uh, so I'm, you know, sticking to my word. But I just, I don't know. I just took a break. <laughs> mm. Good, yeah. Good price money in that show. Yes. Mm. yes. How much is the first place? Hundred thousand or more? Yeah, hundred thousand or so. Yeah, yeah. That's, all right. That's nice. That's pocket change for Arnold. I thought he was going to say pocket change for Brandon, but yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. 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 No? I wish, I wish. Yeah. Yeah. No, but he's getting rewarded uh, with the people he changed, you know, when you change people's lives. That's something, that's good karma anyway, you know, when people yeah. go up to you and you know, all the people mm-hmm. you, you motivate, that's more than money sometimes. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's that's, that's the gift that, gift that keeps on giving, you know. I know, <laughs> it is. Well, that's, the, yeah, yeah. I wanted to know, actually, you know, the, the whole... Can we say Camel Crew? Is that allowed now? Is that... Uh, I think they've adopted it now, haven't they? Because I think, uh, was it Dennis James was the first to say the Camel Crew and they didn't like it. And well, then what's they... that? Is that a negative... Uh... Well, I think it was seen as um, negative. And then, oh, what's happened here? We've got some switch to audio only. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm back. I'm back. Yeah, we're good. Yeah, we're good. Well, what's we're good. that supposed to mean? Cam- uh, uh, oh, okay. yeah. Why, why is, that, is that a negative phrase? No, I think it was. And then I think... Um, it was It was Dennis James. It was, it was supposed to be a, a, a shot at the... At the team, Dennis James, I think, came up with the name Camel, Camel Crew, or whatever. A batter took it and marketed it for, uh, you know, marketed it. You know, so also, he's, he's, that, he's, that, oh, he's yeah. that kind of guy. You know, he take he'll take something that's meant to be negative and stuff, like and he'll it, use, like it, it. use it to his advantage. So yeah. he's, he is that kind of guy. Most of the time, controversial stuff, you don't know how much this guy's laughing. Mm. Yeah, any kind of drama, any kind of this guy's laughing, man. He, he takes it, he takes it like a grain of salt. It's funny. But my leading on to the question was. I always wondered how much of the obviously because you've got you've got American you're like it's like yourself bodybuilders out in Kuwait and then you have the the Kuwaiti guys you know you had like Rami and Ashkenani and I wonder do you actually is there much of a team spirit or do you just kind of are you kind of like passing ships in the night are you just what's it, the... it just it just depends on it depends on the agenda it depends on the time of year you know yeah. if we're all competing around the same time getting for the Olympia you, you know we'll see each other a lot more we're in contact with each other a lot more we're in our office hanging out a lot more. But if, uh, like, I'm here, I'm the only one getting ready for, right now, getting ready for the Arnold. So I'm kind of here to my lonesome for the most part as far as everyone else. Okay. But so it just kind of depends on, you know, what's in what's anybody's, in everybody's schedule, so to speak. So the more that, we, you know, we're competing and getting ready for something together, the more camaraderie we typically have and more we see each other and spend time with each other. So do you feel part of a team? Like, do you, are you really root for Ash, Ahmed Ashkenani? Do you root for Roly? Even, say, especially when you're not competing against him in a certain contest. I always wonder how much is really, whether it's all splintered off into different groups or whether you're actually a real nah, 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 cohesive nah. team. Nah, we want to... We want to see. We want to see everybody here do well. You know, yeah. you know, Oscar. You know, coaches Ashkenani, He coaches uh, Roly. You know, he and he looks at me. He have a look at me. He'll analyze my physique. He drops his opinions to, to my coach. So they bounce uh, ideas off each other, and uh, so it's a collective. Sometimes it's a collective community of uh, advice and uh, attention because they get, they they respect each other, each other's opinions. So mm-hmm. you know, it's not just uh, every man on the island. You know, they do coordinate and do use some teamwork you know here and there when they need to so they can confer with each other you know that you know of course batter's opinion is important as well mm-hmm. so you know it is a, it is a more like a team here because these guys you know they came up together you know they're they're very very close to each other mm-hmm. okay. uh, rami is not there anymore is is he no, he's, he's- He's, he's still in Kuwait, ahead. though, isn't he? He's still in Kuwait. Is he welcome back to the gym? Is he? Is there somebody they talk about? Is is are they upset he's left? People want to know. Who you say, Roly? No, Rami. 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 Oh, you know, uh, man, it's, it's, it's interesting. You know, it's, it's kind of interesting that not seeing Rami around. You know, uh, it, it depends. You know, uh, whether you see him all the time or you see him a little bit, you catch him here and there. He's in Rami, the gym. Rami was. I know you know he's not here. He's in Dubai apparently. I think uh, that's what you're seeing uh, him coaching, training with Neil right now. Mm-hmm. I think this week. Uh, so he's in Dubai right now. But it's kind of weird not seeing him around the gym because even if he wasn't always around, I'd always catch him here and there when he come in late at night, uh, do some doing his training. He did keep to himself a lot when he was here. He was one of those that kept to himself. But we used to always catch him and run into him, and uh, you know, you know, he always greet us happy. You know, <laughs> yeah, so it is different. Yeah. It is different for us. 
for me anyway, that he's not around. But, you know, I wish him the best, man, and, and what he's doing. He has to do what he... Yeah. But are they upset that he left? Are, are they upset? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I don't know anybody that's, that's, that's upset. Not anybody that's spoken to me. Okay. I mean, but, it, uh, you know, I don't, I don't know anybody that's, that's like put mad. All this time and... Yeah, I know, but it's going to come to an end at some point. It's like, you know... You know, Brandon's time at Q8 is going to come to an end at some point. He's going to oh, stop competing for the team, stop competing generally. As a, you know, it's going to come to a, a head at some point. So I think it's maybe. I, well, don't, I don't know. If he, if he wins the classic, you just do one show a year. You go there three months before the Olympia each year, and you finish your career off there. It's way better. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I, like I said, I mean. There was a lot going on before he left, a lot of decisions whether he was going to leave or not. And, of course, of course, he worked with other coaches back and forth while he was even here. Mm -hmm. oh, so I yeah. think they've always dealt, they've dealt with, you know, this, this kind of situation or similar situations with Rami. And I don't really think it's that new. Oh. Uh, you know, it's always been, been, you know, who is he working with this year? Who, you know, who's, what is he going to do? You know, but this is actually his first time actually leaving Kuwait. So, uh, you know, as far as, you know, what's going on in everybody's head, you don't know. I don't know. They, no. they they haven't talked to me about it, so. No. Maybe. But I, I don't sense I don't sense any anybody you know wishing any ill will on him. Mm. Even even my coach, even my coach, you know, he has to do what he has to do. He's a man. Mm. He wants yeah. him to do his best, be his best, you know, and do what he do what he wants to do. You know, he's, mm. he's a man at the end of the day. So. Well, he's not originally from Kuwait. He's from Egypt. Egypt so yeah. he, I mean, that's yeah. I mean, he was that's a long time away from your family, your friends, and maybe he just wanted to do something different. Really well, you know, know, he he came he came out here he came out here as a, as an employee. You know, he actually oh, really? he actually uh, you know pretty much work for the gym. We have guys that are on the floor, and basically they help. They're kind of like coaches. They help uh, spot you. They you know they can recommend machines and different things. So they're always on the floor. He's one of the floor staff. So he started off there, mm -hmm. and I think it was my coach that actually uh, brought him over from Egypt. Okay. And so they so they didn't they didn't really think they didn't really necessarily know he had bodybuilding talent. But these guys get in here and they train. You know, you got Filipino guys that get in here and they train. And, uh, you know, they end up being competing and competing as bodybuilders, you know, in different shows, mm. even though they work here at the gym. It's very common. So I guess Rami, Rami was training and he was developing real quick in it. And then, you know, they took notice of, uh, of, his, of his, of his, uh, yeah, his genetic and his talent. So, you know, Batter used, he saw it and he, he said that he wanted to, you know, I guess promote this guy and help him, uh, you know, as a bodybuilder, you know. I mean, there's a so guy he, that got big fast. Right, man. 2012, yeah. he won the amateur Olympia, wasn't it? In uh, but was that in Kuwait? I think was that Kuwait. But he was very, he, you know, he developed very. I think he was something like mm -hmm. the amount of body weight he gained. In, but, but the, the, incredible. The, what would your main reason for this? Imp Nathan also it happened to Nathan. They helped Nathan the yes, Asha. Yes. So, so that so people, we we can't say everything on the air, but people say there's something why you guys are improving so much. But it's really the training uh, and the full dedication. That, the, yeah, it's, that, that it's really all the, the equipment that hits the correct, it's, that really makes this improvement, isn't Combination. it? Combination. Combination of I'm, this. Right. What, what bodybuilders around the world really, you really get to have this environment, you know? Really got this environment that's isolated and in, in, in just isolated in the sport. You know, if you, can't, if you come here and you can't make the progress that you need to make, it's your own fault. Mm. You know, because you, you really don't have any, you really don't have any excuses. No. You know? No so, so. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, when I, when, uh, you know, life outside of Kuwait for me, you know, it's, it's busy. I have to balance, you know, a lot of things, a lot of different day schedules and everybody else's schedules. You know, I got to always travel with food, you know, I always pre-plan everything. Mm. So it's, it's a lot, it's a lot, it's a lot different, you know, for me to handle those things. But here, you know, it's just kind of, all I have to do is really focus on one thing, you know, and a lot of people take shots and says, ah, oh, you can only make it in Kuwait. But I mean, if this is your career, you take shots all you want. I mean, who who cares what they <laughs> say? It's the, yeah. oh, look, like, who you know, cares what the internet guys say? They've got say? the best of everything, the best training, the best, you know. I mean, even, even pros, even pros take shots. But if you've given an opportunity and, you know, you, you, your, your goal is to be a top bodybuilder in the world, then you, but you'll be a fool. Do they ask you it. to come? Or do you, do you, is it a, like a, you ask them or they ask you? And you don't have to pay nothing, do you? You, have to, you don't have to pay to be there. They, they, do they pay no, you or? No, 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 no. They don't ask. They, they, they. Basically, my coach asked me if I was interested in coming and training with him in Kuwait. Okay. Of course, he had to clear that through a batter, and you know, he had to convince batter that you know that was going to be a good thing for the team. And you know, he agreed. He gave me a shot, and you know, that's how I went. No, I'm not. Be, I'm not being paid to get here. No. 
but it's, it's not costing me anything to be no. here either. Brandon, regardless, so, though, you what, know. regardless of that, was it, um, even though it was the right decision for your career, bodybuilding was and your progress and you knew it would be, was that mm-hmm. still, I'd imagine, was that still a tough decision with your family and everything what, else? What was that? Was that something what, you really had to talk through with your wife? Well, no, my wife, my wife, you know, she was on top of it. She, even before the opportunity came up, she asked me if I got the opportunity to come to Kuwait, would I do it? Mm-hmm. At the time, it, w- it wasn't a thought in my mind, so I told her no. You know, it wasn't even on the table for me. Oh, really? So mentally, okay. I, didn't, I didn't have to think about it. I just said no. But then, you know, then, then this opportunity arises, and she's, she's, you know, of course, she's encouraging. She's the first one. To saying, oh yeah, you got to do it. You got to do it. That's not many wives. It was a former bikini. Did she win some bikini titles or? Oh, uh, she's a former uh, bikini competitor. Yeah, she uh, she came when bikini started. It was uh, what was the uh, the what? bikini models flex, flex bikini cover. model search. Yeah. The flex bikini model search was what kind of the bikini division came out of, mm. and she was one of the first uh, winners of the flex bikini model search mm. that that catapulted into the bikini division yeah. at the. Uh, uh, brought that on the scene. So, yeah, she's she's uh, she, then she went pro after that. Yeah, she went pro after that. So she's a pro bikini, and you know she's competed in the Arnold and stuff before. But so so she she just understands the sport. She wants to see me do well. She's mm-hmm. she's been supportive. I ba- basically let's see. I, let's see. I got married. We'll see. In 07, well 08, I moved out to uh, California. We got yeah. married. You know, then uh, we went to Hawaii, spent some time out there. I was prepping for the USA's, mm. as was she. Wow. And uh, I went pro. I went pro that summer right after mm. that. So she's, you know, she's been uh, supportive of me even before, you know, we were married as far as pushing bodybuilding and really support my career. So she's always believed in me and wanted me to do well. Mm-hmm. So, you know, and she's always looked out for my best interests, you know, mm. and making sure, you know, people don't take advantage of me and I'm and I'm making the best decisions that I can make. So. Like I said, she was pushing me to to do it and make the decision before I was really uh, set to in myself to wow. say, okay, I'm willing to do it. I had to think about it, and and even though I was willing to go, uh, I'm more I'm I'm really patient, so I wasn't really pressuring or calling or checking up on it, even though I agreed to go. And she was like, hey, you call him yet? You call him yet? You let him know? You let him know you're coming? You know, she was on top of me and making sure that I, you know, making sure I wasn't gonna back out, making sure I was all in. So yeah. So she, when she, yeah. when it was decided, did you just say, okay, oh, we're gonna? We're, did you just plan, say, a year or two? I said, okay, we're gonna do this for a year. Oh, no, we're gonna do it for two. Do you, and do you still plan it year by year, or do you just have a long term plan? Say, right, this is gonna be a five year plan, and this is what we're gonna do for the next few years. No, we we, we take it we take it uh, we take it as each each year develops. You know, we okay. don't. Mm-hmm. You know, we got a certain we got a certain uh, certain goal, current mission, and. And you know we don't know what that's going to require. So until that's really uh, you know accomplished, and we we don't know what to expect. You know, my first year out here, I was out here for eleven months. Oh, you know, you were eleven straight, months straight. straight. Well, well, we actually not eleven months straight, but eleven months of pretty much uh, most of that year. Wow. So I think I, I I was home very little, but that that's what you know she knew was required for me to make the changes that I made on my first my first well, outing. If she knew it would never you know. It's, of course, take that long for me to be out here again after that. Do you, do you so train? She's, Sorry. So Sorry. she's willing to, you know, sacrifice with me. Wow. And, you know, she, of course, she helps the kids understand and their lives are just are still very, very busy. So, you know, they see daddy on uh, on FaceTime and stuff all the time, <laughs> but they're so busy that they're not they're not thinking about, oh, daddy's not here. And then daddy's they're not sad because, you know, she keeps their lives, you know, very, very. So you, very you're a very lucky active. man then, huh? You're very lucky, yes. man. And oh, she was yeah. pregnant very, very while she won her. Wasn't she pregnant while she won her show or something? She didn't know, or uh, she did. She's pregnant on stage at the New York Pro, and she didn't know. Oh wow! She did, uh, <laughs> the New York Pro. She was yeah. doing the New York Pro, she, and she didn't know she was pregnant. Yeah, and I think she turned. What well, she turned pro? I think it was seven months after her, after my son Maximus. Mm. So yeah, so she she was you know she she understands and she. She she understands the push and she loves the sport just as well. So, do you uh, do you still train when you go home? I mean, how long are you home for at a time? Oh yeah, I mean, I tr- I was home what a couple months uh, after the Olympia, I guess, uh, maybe a little bit over. But yeah, I train I train when I go home. I mean, I still gotta stay on my grind. And a lot of times she comes and she trains she trains with me. You know, oh, wow. she'll she'll be there with me and uh, you know she's in the gym and she's you know she's she's a uh, very dedicated, you know, so mm. I, I'm very, very blessed 
and uh and it couldn't work without her definitely it couldn't work mm. so That's and cool. i would i wouldn't be in kuwait without without her so no. i know that for a fact mm. yeah we uh should we don't you have some questions? I, I there's a question i would like to know actually i thought you were going to give us a random question wasn't that a new thing for you no no okay no. <laughs> <laughs> i would like to, i would like to know actually is this is a bit of a theory like say the guys from the 90s say like flex wheeler chris cormier it based in california the must the mecca mm. i always wondered how how they would have done if they'd have been in that kind of situation how much better they would have been say because obviously california living out there in the summer flex wheel would always look better at the arnold than he would at the olympia because maybe summertime in california a lot of distraction kind of the opposite of what there is i in think QA. there's a lot of current guys who would do a lot better going there uh, well, yeah. Uh, yeah 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 so, well, the thing uh, is the q8 doesn't actually work for everyone like regan didn't it wasn't for him he just, you know, maybe missed home. John De La Rosa didn't work out too well. De, Ro De La Rosa went out, didn't he? De La Rosa he? was there. Wasn't yeah, he? yeah. Yeah, it didn't work out too well yeah, for him. Well, maybe it's not too, maybe it's... Hmm, it's, it's, no. it's, 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 it's certain, it's certain, certain, it takes a certain personality, a certain uh, mentality, I guess, to kind of deal with the somewhat isolation. You know, you could be in a room with a group of people and, you know, if, if, if you're that kind of person that easily feels lonely, you'll feel lonely because nobody's speaking your language mm. you know so but you know that's not really that's not really me you know mm. so, <laughs> so but i can understand it you know i've talked to guys that's been out here i've talked to you know keem and he was my roommate mm -hmm. and different guys that's been out here and, and you know a lot of guys they you know they they need a little bit a little bit more mm. and you know and uh you know and that's understandable we are different so it's not it's not a it's not a shot at them but this just happens to fit fit with me and my personality have you ever spoke with your SciTech teammate, Cedric McMillan, about coming out? To oh, you ways? want him to go over there, Because, eh? I mean, we all know what Cedric could do at 100%. Are you friends with Cedric personally, or is it just yeah. teammates? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I'm, they're corporate friends with Cedric. We oh. travel together. We spend a lot of time together mm. uh, over the years. But um, I think Cedric had the opportunity to come out here. You did? Uh, I'm, pr I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I don't, think it, was, I don't think it would suit him. I don't, think it's, I don't think it would suit him. Why I, not? I, yeah, he... He, yeah, they 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 pretty much uh, agreed that they, it may not suit it may not suit them as either. So, okay. I mean, uh, it's just it's just not, not going to suit everybody's personality. You mm -hmm. know, some people just they just going to go cat. They're going to have cabin fever. They're going they're going they, you know, they just going to go nuts. I mean, I think the first the first month for most people that I see that come out here is the hardest. Okay. You know, that's yeah. that's when guys are like they're like ready to come home. They're like you see you see you see them and they're like, "Ah, oh, man, I think you know, you see that they're ready to go home." Oh, and then after they can make it past that first month, a lot of them are cool after that. They're like, "Oh, it's not that bad. Well, I'm glad I didn't leave, you know." Huh? Regan only managed what 4 weeks and then he came home. I hope they don't go to no long jail sentences if they can't handle a month with <laughs> training, bro. I hope they <laughs> I hope that never happens. If you can't stay a month with perfect food, gym training to further your career, mm -hmm. come on, man. But see, but see, but sometimes it's external pressure too. I won't, I won't speak on everybody's information, but sometimes, you know, you know, the external pressure to, you know, people missing you, people you on your home, and you know, people that sometimes drives guys home too because they mm -hmm. don't have necessarily, you know, people to understand what you know what they're trying to, mm -hmm. the objective or whatever, or they have the patience to deal with them being away. So sometimes they hear they get it from not only are they feeling a certain way, missing their families or whatnot, but they hearing that feedback <laughs> as well. Mm. You know, somebody missing them, wanting to see them, and you know, you know, all that kind of stuff. So that kind of can feed that fire mm. that they're that they're, that they're feeling. So, mm. you know, it's, it. it Oh, so let's talk about last year's Olympia. What did you yeah, think go of? Obviously, that was a bit of a shocker seeing Sean Roden, who kind of wasn't really on anyone's radar. Really, I think that's fair to say because he, you know, <laughs> you, down you to like to say that. I do like to say that because I didn't <laughs> well, see it. I like well, to. Yeah, but I've got to. I'm, he's right, though. He's right. Oh. I, so <laughs> who did what? What did you think? <laughs> How? Who did you think? Sean Roden or Phil Heath or Winkler were in the top three? Who would you have winning? I will take it I'll take it just how I went. I'll take it just how I went. I don't I don't really disagree uh with how it went at all. I mean, um uh Sean was definitely definitely sharp, 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 sharp. Sharper than Roley, you know. And he I won't say he was necessarily sharper than Phil all the way around, but when it came to to Phil's, you know, I saw her in a, in a, in a speed in a, in a way, you know. It's just it just bait. Sean just had a physique to blatantly expose it, mm. you know, in, in the judges' eyes, and it just it's just it's kind of like chess, you know, the chess match, and Sean was able to expose it, man, to a degree to where, 
you know, the judges are like, you know, we don't need this anymore. <laughs> do you, um, we don't need this. Do you think Phil will come back? Uh, I hope he does. You know, I hope he does but if he wants to. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I, I definitely like to com- compete against Phil again. Hopefully a better Phil because, you know, beating a better Phil would be great. Uh, you know, but if, if I had the opportunity. Uh, oh, course, you're going to beat the better Phil Pete? I said, you know, the opportunity to beat a better yeah, field would be great. You know, yeah. I, I, you know, I, I like, I like, you know, the competitive, and I know he's a, he's a, he's a great competitor. Mm. He's a competitive. He's a challenge. A lot of people don't understand Phil because he's like the first social media Mr. Olympia. So you know, he's kind of like the experimentation out there. Yeah, yeah, Put yeah, him yeah, out yeah. there, yeah. <laughs> and so he's made every mistake in the book that you can make with social media. But nobody had to, had to do it before to even see what it would be like. So he's kind of stepping on uncharted territory so a lot of people you know throw shade on them for the way he's handled it but i mean come on you be the first one out there in social media land yeah. with everybody attacking you and see how you do so mm. you know i i respect him as a champion and uh you know i hope he has a fast recovery and, and like i like to see him back because it's always been my dream to com- compete against uh you know phil and you know and, and battle with phil so mm-hmm. and i really haven't had the opportunity so uh, it would be great to have him come back do you think sean will win again this year uh, if, if I have anything to say about it, no. <laughs> nice. Mm, mm. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, I love, I love Sean. I love Sean, but you know, I mean, you know, if he can, he can, if he can defy all the time as, as good as Dexter can, you know, he has the opportunity, but you know, mm-hmm. that's always knocking on his door as well. Well, but, uh, and well, last year, someone it, went last year, 2017, you went, you had the guy who went from fifth to first last year, you placed fifth. So yeah, you know, I, I, like I said, I'm I'm not I'm not I'm not going to sell myself short and say that it's it's not possible that I'm going to be training and working as as if it's possible to do, you know, God willing, you know, it, it it'll be accomplished in, if not this year, next year, whatever it may be. Mm. But I'm I'm going after that title nonetheless, you know, and I'm stubborn enough to to just continue to pursue it, you know, as long as nobody's willing. Yeah. It's so, it's amazing uh, that we can say Brandon Curry might win the 2019 yeah. Olympia and people will be like, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. you got to grab this moment, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, like you, I said, this, this is it? Yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. You don't, you don't get, you don't get the opportunity to, 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 to you know, this doesn't come around. All the time. I know. You this is like a, live. this is a changing and, you know, times and we're not saying changing Sean Goldman. times. The door, the door is open. The door and, is open. They clearly put it that way. Yeah. They clearly have a standard. Oh, I see what you mean. I see what you mean. To, yeah. They want to, to go towards, and you know, I'm just gonna try to be that standard that, that convince them that you know I'm 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 good to, ambassador for that what they're trying to represent in the sport. That's that's my job. So, you know, it's a very exciting time for me, a point in bodybuilding that I didn't know if I would see or how soon I would see it, but yeah. it's here. So, man, it's no it's no hold back now at this point. How old are you now, Brandon? I am 36. I just turned 36. Oh, I still, that's, that. that's still young. Then you got to say 33. It sounds better. Sorry, just... 33, Brandon. <laughs> yeah. no. Nah, I, I, I don't got to lie about my age. That's young. My that's age, young for bodybuilding. Uh, yeah, all he needs to do is paint this beard with a black jet black color. And <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I'll, I, I'll do that. I'll do that. Come, yeah, you know, yeah. Time, yeah. You know, of yeah. course. Of yeah. course. Yeah, but I'm prime. It's prime time. Ah, it's prime so, time you now, know. yeah. I, it's, it's no holding back. Yeah, and um, are you going to get yourself to the Arnold Classic? Because I think we put in an application for your press pass, so yeah. you need to come out well, and support. I want to say just because uh, we have to. Yeah, they are trolling us with the time. We got so many complaints about the time, and we are over one. I just want to say this, uh, Brandon. Uh, when I saw you at the, you know, he has an Instagram. He has a new picture with his pants and his shirt off. Have you, you know what I mean? You have like <laughs> the one in the hotel room on the yeah. hotel yeah. room. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I cool saw, picture. I saw the picture. I was like. He can win Mr. Olympia now. Mm. He has everything. This is going to, I think this is going to be, if you really put everything you have into it, Brandon, you have a big chance to win the Olympia. And I just hope you, not only your physique, the sport, the higher ups, as we call them, higher ups. they love, you have the, you have the beautiful, mm. uh, smart wife. You, you have, uh, I uh, also like not to be political with some people, but it's nice to see. Uh, no, that's I can't be too controversial. But it's nice to see that you have a like a good, strong <laughs> black, strong black family. To, to, yeah, but it's, it's okay, like okay. you know I like to see it, and we have uh, good rep. You have all the tools now. 
to become Mr. Olympia outside of the body also because it's important to have all the, yeah. the you know what I mean? You're proven that you, we can trust you. You you have no police record. You you're uh, <laughs> he, he's he's like he's what bodybuilding. You can put him on he's, TV. Well, he's got no black marks against him. He's got no kind of no. But um, this is the, no controversy, no this scandal. Is, this you is know? you are the helps, helps. the Brandon Currys are the family we can promote. So it's we we root <laughs> we, we yeah. <laughs> so we're rooting for you, and we we we. I will hope to be the Arnold Classic and root more for you. Uh, but it's the Olympia that I'm. Uh, I, uh, aside from that, do you know what else I would like to see? No. I'd like to see him on a front cover. I want to see, I mean, we've got Phil Heath there. We've got Nathan. We've got Rami. We've got Roly, Sean, Sergio. I think we, I think he's deserving of a cover. Hey, hey Steve. Hey, Steve, you hear that? Yeah, Steve. Yeah. Steve. Steve. <laughs> Steve, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to email him as soon as we get off this tonight. And I'm going to say. It will happen. I know, I know. I, I know he got some pictures around there somewhere. So. <laughs> yeah, he does. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I've, no. seen a, I've seen a few of them. Yeah. Okay, Brandon, have you got anyone you'd like to thank? Anyone you'd like to any uh, give a shout out? Oh, man. I, I, of course, first goes to my wife, you know, my, oh, yes. my main support system. That's what's so my coach, Abdullah, of course. He's just a shout out. Uh, of course, Battle Blue Die, mm-hmm. Psych Tech Nutrition, um, MNX Clothing. Generation Iron for doing that series on me, getting into my life a little bit. Nice. Um, let's see. IFBB. Pro League. Pro League. Pro League. Pro League. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Get the right one. Get the right one. We we Get the right one. Yeah. Can we see one arm, uh, Brandon? He keeps flashing his arm, doesn't he? Gee, oh my. Yeah. God. There you go. We want to see some muscle, man. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, you know, Jim Jim Man, you know. Uh, yeah. Let's see who else. Who else? Who else is in the book? What, you got to go with all Weinberger, Charles Thomas, all the AJ. Fans out there, I hear from on a daily basis that you know stop to message me and uh, yeah. tell them how much I encourage them, mm. and uh, you know just provide encouragement to me. I, I do hear it. I do respond. I appreciate it. Uh, you know, thank you guys. That's, that's on my on my feed. Mm-hmm. You know, just pushing that positivity out there on my pictures, on my on the comments. I really I'm seeing that too. I don't get to respond to everything, but I see that. So I appreciate <laughs> you guys for following me. Uh, you know, just keep praying for me, you know, keep support me. I need that. You know, a man can only do so much by himself, you know. So, you know, we're just going to push this man and just keep encouraging me, encouraging each other. And hopefully I can provide some motivation, some inspiration for everybody because uh, I'm after it. I'm after it. <laughs> and, and the fish and chips are on me if he wins the Arnold at the at the hotel. Yeah, <laughs> fish and chips. chips. Fish yeah. and chips and red Gee, wine. I'll have it ready for him if he wins the Arnold. I'll be sat there oh, waiting. Yeah. We'll be waiting. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And a shout out to my kids, my kids, Maximus, no, Zoe Maximus, Marvelous, Zion, and my dog Lux. Oh, and, um, that's the reality. That's a Lonzo Ball family documentary TV. Like you, you see it coming. It's gonna be a documentary <laughs> if you win the Olympia about you guys, like a reality show. That'd be great. Yeah, we, we plan to do some more projects. So hopefully, uh, you know, I think the end of the series, the last show of the series, it was released this week. But I know they got more content, and we're gonna do some more content. So that's brilliant. That's more negotiating to do. So more to come, guys. More to come. Definitely. Yeah. Brandon, I will see you in eight weeks' time in Columbus. I'll be sat down the front. You can hear me. You'll hear me screaming. I'm, I, th- I think you. I'm sure you nodded to me at the Olympia. Was it? Was it him or Kamal? I, think. <laughs> so I was screaming. Like, oh, Brandon! <laughs> so uh, yeah. So I'll see you in eight weeks' time at the Arnold Classic. We're going to be rooting for you, mate. Mm. And I want to thank you so much for taking the time for for doing this. We really appreciate it. And it's um. And I'm glad you said you even watched a couple of the episodes of our show. So I was really, I've really. Seen, I've seen every one of them. Every oh, one. Oh, oh, fantastic! <laughs> That's good. Fantastic. Okay. Brandon we'll let you go then and uh, like I said we'll see you in a few weeks time in Columbus Ohio all right guys. thank you okay Brandon you. take care mate bye bye all right cheers bye cheers ah Chris no good guy huh microphone oh, we're shit. still on I'm excited I, oh sorry I'm, I'm so excited I forget Chris that's a good guy wasn't it oh, yeah. here we go what do you think well everybody knows at home uh if you want a representative to be Mr. Olympia, there you go. Yeah, yeah. And like, and thing is, that's the kind of that is one of the the good things about Sean Roden winning. It has um, like it it does give more hope, I think, to probably to guys like Brandon that it is. Um, and like I said, I've got a feeling. I've got a feeling we're going to have a few one-time Mr. Olympias. I've got a feeling all this. Everybody's saying it's easy to win. Sean Roden's going to go even harder in the gym because mm. <laughs> everybody says he's wide open. Everybody can win it. Yeah. He might he might just go 
Sylvester Stallone run like a Rambo <laughs> and go all in. What with logs in the in the, no, in the snow? No, 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 no. But no, but yeah. uh, Brandon, uh, what a, the improvements he's I, made is he, just epic. The thing is, if he if he managed to maintain. 50% of the improvements he's made from 2017 to 2018, and he does that even 50% of what he achieved in that time. It fixed those little small things you said. What, yeah, a bit what? of detail in the back, a bit more... Um, like I said, his legs from the side are phenomenal. His hamstring hang is incredible. His legs, the pictures his coach sent me today, I should have put them up on the Where's screen. The, can we, can, can, no, we can't show them. Uh, no, no, we have, well, we have them on my phone yeah. now. <laughs> but uh, this coach, obviously I've realised that's his coach now, sent me those pictures this morning. Uh, the legs are definitely up from the front. He's looking in very good condition for eight weeks out. So, and like he said, the detail in his back is going to be, he said it's already more than what it was at the Olympian. That's, that's eight weeks out. And it's also so nice to see for people who are, what can I say? try to portray this Badr Budai as like a, some, not a dark figure that, co can you imagine all he's doing for bodybuilding? People can't understand sometimes these that, people who that, are self-made. They can't, they can't um, like fathom it. The, the equipment that he takes in and out, the way he treats mm. them, and he doesn't take any money for it. <laughs> it's amazing. You know, and it's like, he doesn't yeah. take their prize money away. Yeah. And it's just like, uh, we need more guys like him, that's for sure. Imagine if we had another three. Can you imagine another if you had a couple one of those in Europe? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Shit. I mean, this, you know, that's, I mean, we, yeah. I yeah. Mean, he's like kind of like the, the Middle Eastern Joe Weeder. Exactly. <laughs> or Ed Connors with a lot of money. Yes. Yeah. yeah, and he's and he's like I said, he's. Um, I mean, this, like I remember putting something up on uh, was on the forum or something, and it was saying about uh, about conditioning and about the guy. And he says, "Well, we we prep men's physique guys as well." True, yeah. I said, you know, we've we, it's not just those main guys. It's um, mm. he, he's got a he's got a like that Australian guy we've seen. He's been out there for ages. Yeah. I didn't know about these guys. No, we should write them a letter that said MD if you guys want us there. Oh, I'd love to uh, no, Badr Budai, if you want us there, you pay our tickets. We don't need no money. We just come. Well, you know, yes. Well, you know the Q8 show. I'll build some leg size. You build some delt size. <laughs> and we're going to do it. Well, you know, you know the Q8 show that he runs, the oh. pro show. The two, I think it was 2017, the first year he did it. He didn't charge anyone for the tickets. He gave the tickets away because he just wanted to put on a good show. He doesn't have to do, he doesn't have to do this either. No, he doesn't have to do it. Of course no. he doesn't. Well, that was a great episode. Yep. You happy with that, Chris? Absolutely. Good. Absolutely. Tell me why you're happy with it. Tell me why. Tell me why. Ain't nothing but, but okay, a I won't hard break. No, 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 no. No, we're not singing back to you, boys. <laughs> I was, but yeah. Be because we had sound, probably. It was all fine. You know, the sound worked. I thought you were going to say there were sound problems. Yeah, like, sound, what? Sorry, sorry, guys. Can you do it again? <laughs> <laughs> with you with Jamie, remember? Uh, oh, two shout outs, guys. Two shout outs before we end it. Give I, us two I shout outs. Now, come on now. Prep for shout outs. I've got one. Have you? Yeah. Ronaldo Colmano. Oh, <laughs> who's, that? who's this? Who's this? Are you? we talking football again? No. Oh, oh God. No. <laughs> not soccer again. I hate soccer. <laughs> Bodybuilding. No, he doesn't even get it. <laughs> oh, oh, no, Giles. Have, have, I, have I missed something here? Say He's on the WhatsApp group. Ronaldo Colmano. I'm lost. Man, you need to use your insulin shots again, bro. You, <laughs> Ronaldo Colmano. We'll tell you about it later. You don't remember that? No. No, I don't. My first shout out is to <laughs> who? Come on, give me. My first shout out is to the dictator. Ah yes, from uh, from uh, where is he from? Uh, but he, he he's at UK. He's in the UK, but what's his yeah, real name? I forgot right now. The uh, dictator. That's his Instagram handle. Ka Kasal Kaf. Ka oh, funny. Give a shout out. I'll find it. <laughs> okay. Uh, shout out. Uh, let me think. I never prep for a shout out. No, you don't have to prep for a shout out. <laughs> prep for a shout out. Hi, Jack. High tech pharmaceuticals for As always. supporting the show. Yes. Ron Harris. Yeah, Ron Harris. Yeah, of course. And uh, Big Steve, yeah. Big Steve. Blackman. Who's Big Steve? Wamberger. Big Steve Blackman. Yes. Oh, Blackman. Uh, and we kept it down to around about two hours because obviously that's how uh, Casal, Casal, the dictator. Yeah, good guy. Yeah, so that's and I want to give a shout out to. We need to wrap up. We need to wrap up. Okay, Nathan Biasha. I hope you're still giving it to y'all. Yeah, yeah, we want to see Nathan. I don't want to. I want to see Nathan's rise continue. Yeah, and uh, Nathan Biasha, and also to Rami as well, because it was you know there's someone we want to still con continue to see do well, and he's in good hands in Neil Hill. But also, and obviously, um, a huge shout out to Amadash Kanani and the and the Camel Crew. Michael Edwards, you too, bro. Michael Edwards. Okay. Okay. Thank you, AJ. Thank you, Chris. Uh, that has been episode six of MD Global Muscle Radio. We will see you in one week's time for the next yeah, guest. That's uh, true. Yes. So, okay. Well, we'll see you soon. And uh, I need some food. And that's the, <laughs> and that's the hint he gave you, by the way. Who? No. We, 
and we wrap it up. I'm lost. Okay, see you later. MD Global Muscle Radio was brought to you by High Tech Pharmaceuticals, produced by Chris Clark and Pump Media, directed by Giles Thomas. This has been a production of Advanced Research Media.